YKTR Sports Nation, welcome back to the greatest podcast this side of Mars. Today we are brought to you by Steady Freddy for a better fucking world. Use our code YKTR15 for 15% off. Guys, coming first on the field is a great thing. On the track is a great thing, but coming first in the bedroom isn't. Use the delay spray from Steady Freddy with our code YKTR15 for 15% off. Skip a scope. Sixth question. What age did you lose your virginity? Uh, late bloomer, just like my NRL career. Late, late for Western Sydney or late for in general? Late in general, seventeen I was when I lost my uh, early, it's, it's, early seventeen, late sixteen. That's a late bloomer, I think. For Jack, most. Jack, are you? West Auckland baby, fourteen years old. Fourteen. <laughs> yeah. West Auckland. Yeah, don't throw in West Auckland like that. <laughs> yeah, I think I was. Shout si- out Desi. I was sixteen, Speaking seventeen, as always. Oh, right, guys, joined to you by Skipper Scope, Vintage Jackson behind the producer. Guys, announcement: Willie Mason <laughs> is back off the YKTR Sports Show for now. Um, sort of had a chat to scope yesterday and was kind of a conflict of interest with his own podcast to take by with Willie Mason as well so um, still not done obviously we appreciate all the content that Mason's done for us we've got some shows lined up with Skip a bit later on Um, these guys have been working on the show behind the scenes which we think is going to be really great so he's still going to be part of it just a week to week uh, who won't be here so it's not done I'm still going to chase him around I'm still going to try and get a deal done with him it's not over I'm still going to chase him so it was double double takey so he's uh, shout out uh, to the Willie Mason, the tape Willie Mason. If you do, go watch his podcast. But basically, he was saying the same things on his podcast, coming on and doing ours. Um, and he was just regurgitating the same stuff he felt like. And then, like I said, we've got a pretty cool show that I've got planned, and we want him to be the focus of it. So he's still going to be a part of the YKTR Sports family at some point a little bit later in the year. But um, yeah, like I said, go support Mace. Take uh, the, the take, take with, with Willie Mason. Mason. Um, so go check it out on YouTube. Go run the comments up. All the, all the takes he's been saying with us, he says that on his podcast anyway. So yep. go check him out. And um, then we'll give you our view on ours. Maybe a day or two later, come and, come and fuck with us as per. All right, cool. Set of six. Let's just roll straight into it, Jacko. Let's go. Obviously, the big news this week, Scope, we'll start with you with these ones, was the suspensions and injuries to the three superstars. So uh, it leads to a bit of uncertainty around sort of the final eight positions for both Para, uh, the Broncos, and the Penrith Panthers. We'll start with Nathan Cleary. Yep. The tackle. Um, so Nath and Jerome are now both out until finals. Hurts. What did you make of the tackle? And then what did you make of Cleary's suspension? Um, dangerous tackle. We don't want to see that sort of tackle. I think, you know, in the office we're talking this morning about Woodsy's take. I think he was 100% right. Um, Nath shouldn't be a protected species as much as we love seeing him out there and we want to see him playing footy as much as we can. Uh, for me, it was pretty similar to the Carlos Lawton tackle at the start of the year. I think Carlos ended up getting around the same four to five weeks. Uh, yeah, like I said, although I don't, know what I, I don't want to see Nath put out, he put Dill Brown in a, a vulnerable position. Dill's our boy too. Yeah, and we love Dill, so... Um, I thought they got it right. He should. He's he's got a bit of a. I think it might be a blessing in disguise for the Panthers. Actually, the, the, I, I seen you know someone else talking about this as well with Nath and Jerome missing this little period. Not bad. Uh, they'll come into the finals fresh. They'll just give that second win to the Panthers when they eventually come back. And I think. For me, I think it makes Penrith even more that more dangerous, even before we get to Moses and Carrigan. I disagree. I kind of makes it, it feels like it makes him a little bit more human because we're at the mercy of the rugby league gods here. You can get you can get injured, you can get suspended. I don't think Penrith can win a competition without these two as well. I know they're running into the finals, and we can look at it from a positive side where the boys are going to be fresh, but they also might be a little bit clunky as well, and that might roll into another injury as well. So yeah, I agree with Scope. I think the um, judiciary, I think that was fair five weeks. It's one of those tackles that just kind of got messy late. Um, yeah. Both boys were in the tackle in one kind of release, and Nath plays the game tough. That's one of the great things about him as a halfback, and the reason why me and Scope Love Joey because he wasn't a liability on defense as well. He just kind of got it wrong, and he's been um, there's a consequence for that, and he's going to be living through it as well. So for me, I feel like it makes Penrith a little bit more human. I like one point that you said there because at the start of the year, I think we even talked about it on the show. Penrith could afford to lose either Nath or Isaiah Yell and still win the comp. I don't think they can anymore. I think the comp, the comp, the competition in particular has improved out of sight. I think there are a few teams knocking on the door where. Um, like I said, at the start of the year, I thought, you know, um, they're probably the one team that could lose a star and still potentially, like, it, for sure they wouldn't be favourites, but um, I think they could still win the comp. Now, I um, just watching them of late, uh, they've played a shitload of footy. We always refer back to the Roosters of, you know, trying to, trying to hit that repeat, how, you know, eventually the wear and tear just gets to the players and, 
Um, they start to fade away a little bit. So that's why I think it'll be a benefit. They do have a buffer. They've got like eight points ahead or six points ahead. Oh, yeah. So they're still sweet. They're sitting pretty. They probably need to win one or two more games to pick up the minor premiership. I don't know. That sort of stuff matters to Ivan as well. It's not the be or end all, but it is a nice little tip of the hats here for your regular season as well. So picking up those and picking up trophies is important to Ivan. So still there. Um, SOS come in and Oliver Salmon coming in as well. So that's pretty exciting. Teriyaki. Um, (laughs) it'll be, uh, it'll be an interesting, um, a game this weekend before like even getting to the breakdown because these two have had a bit of shit into them the last couple of years. There's mm. been a bit of niggle. Um, Raiders will give themselves a chance to get some payback because Panthers have talked some shit on them at, throughout and at the end of games. Down, the, down in Canberra too. Down in Canberra. Um, just before we even get to the break, they'll you know, pay attention at the end. They'll, they'll be one of my best bets. We've always, we've always sort of, them. we've always talked about Penrith's nursery as well and seeing how much, and we said there's not been a side as equipped for Origin as much as Penrith over the years. And like, that's still, that point is still true. Yeah. But you still need your big dog there. You still yeah. need Nathan, Isaiah, and Jerome probably third, third Especially against teams now where a team like Canberra's got a lot of confidence. Uh, they're fighting for a position in the eight. They've got a fairly good run. If they can knock this one over, it puts them in really good stead for the back end of the last four games and will completely fuck my bracket. So um, <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Which is unfortunate. <laughs> my bracket's fucked because of all these injuries too, by the way. I'm getting out there early. Uh, got hammered already uh, from yes. a few people who were on the sh- I could uh, see Sharky that coming, stand. Scope. I could see that coming. Yeah, you did call it. <laughs> uh, scope, talking about teams affected running into the finals, obviously Parramatta. This is huge. Yep. It's probably the biggest, I think, out of these three that we're going to be talking about. And we'll get to Carrigan as well. We will yep. get to Carrigan. But Mitchell Moses, um, Jakey Arthur does come in. Obviously, any time he carries that last name, it's going to be pressure. But what do you make of Moses being out? What does it do for Para? Can I go first? Go for it. The thing, uh, the thing that's scary about the, the thing that's kind of exciting about this, I think Mitch Moses um, is important to Parramatta, but I'm not too sure if they can win a competition with him. And now he's removed from it. If Parramatta start to thrive with Aldum and he's asking for a million dollar payday, I think it's if they if they start to win, I think they start looking over the fence and potentially bringing in a halfback that could get them all the way as well. In my opinion, if you plugged in anyone that's won a competition with Parramatta, uh, with um, in the seven jersey, a Jerome Hughes, a Daly Cherry Evans, a Adam Reynolds into that same uh, Parramatta side, I think they can get it done. I'm not I'm a Mitch Moses fan, but I'm not too sure if he can carry them all the way to um, Premiership glory in October as well. So it's an interesting couple of weeks coming up there's enough talent within Parramatta to get it done um, obviously the Jacob Arthur's a, a whole another conversation for herself but I just kind of want to get their take out there it's an interesting time for him in terms of the million dollar payday yeah it's the same it's, it's sort of what I alluded to the other a couple of weeks ago when I did my um, TikTok and it was I'd, I'd known Mitchy for a while he played um, you know his mates with my brother they come through in the same age group and he was a Parramatta junior even before he went to the Tigers he like played for Borkham Hills or or Wenny or one of those teams coming through so the thing with Mitchie and, and Parramatta that like I was trying to get my point across with it is that he understands like he's been ingrained in Parramatta for his whole life he understands how important that number seven jersey is and he for me, like he really wants to be the guy, and sometimes, like when you know, when it, when all that pressure and and um and when you understand the history of it, maybe like being at the club because I agree with you. I think he can win a comp, but I'm just I'm a little bit unsure of whether it's going to be at Parramatta, and uh, unless and and, th- and again, I alluded to it um, on on, a, on previous shows that I th- may if you if just make him the captain. For me, like he's got to be the leader. I feel like he's got those leadership qualities. Um, but I'm excited for Jakey Arthur, like moving away from Moses as well. Uh, he's been under the pump this year. Uh, he, he's, I think the fan base now is split on it 50-50. Uh, when I read, me and Lukey read some of the comments on the Parramatta fan pages about uh, the support that he's been getting of late and then the criticism. Uh, but I think this is – I'm really excited for what he can do. This is his preferred position. Uh, at times when he's had to come in and play with Mitch, I don't think he suits Mitch as much as he does Dill because – Dill's easy. Yeah. I Dill. think I think a lot of halves would love to just play with Dill and if I, was, and if I, I think it'll bring seven, out the best in Dill as well. If I was a seven, I'd love to play with Dill. He doesn't over the, overcall the ball too much. He runs when he needs to. He's a big body, so he's almost like a, another another back five where he can carry the ball for you, kicks well, and he's got a bit of X factor as well. So Dill is almost one of the – one of the most complimentary sixes you have in the comp, but I, I'd love to play with him. I think um, he started the competition on fire, Dill, 
He went through. He had. He looked looked to have had an ankle injury for a couple of weeks that he played on that that was hampering him for a bit, and he sort of just sort of plateaued and, and been cruising along. It's a good plateau to plateau at though. Yeah, for exactly. A like he was, and he and it's not like he was playing bad because he was still having really nice moments, but he's just going through a bit of a plateau, and I think now with this, I think the urgency that. That, that will come out of the paramedic camp with this injury because then everyone else has to step up. I just like when I watch Moses, he's such a big personality that sometimes I think he shrinks people that are around him. Agree. And therefore, when, when a guy like uh, a Dill Brown, who's normally, you know, obviously we know him on a personal level as well, he's so fucking laid back, kicked back. He's normie. He's happy, he's happy to be, to be the, the vice skipper, like normie, you know, yeah. right? Like he just, he not vice skipper, but the, the second in charge. Two, I see. Yep. So I think it'll bring out the best of Brown. I'm excited to, for Jacob Arthur um, to have a big couple of weeks and um, you know just really get that pressure off him. I know he's off, I spoke about it being off contract next year, uh, set himself up and, and have a good end of the season. Mitchie will then come back in and then we'll, hey, we'll see where Parramatta are at after this little three or four week period. Random fucking thought just then as well. Say BA starts to leave Parramatta. Can I, I can see this happening. Someone like Tommy Turbo, best player on the comp, potentially moving him to six, getting Guffo back over to Manly. Play him at the fullback or am I just fucking saying random shit out of nowhere? It's pretty random, um, but it's not like... I think he just signed the new big deal, Gutho. Eh? Yeah, Gutho oh, has he? Re- yeah. signed, re yeah, he, He's got a clause year. in there for sure with BA. I I'll have a look, yeah. Oh, I'm just making oh, that up as well. Claw they're they're like tight, back. tight. Yeah, and so is Moses. Like Moses, Gutho and uh, BA are fucking so tight. So that's their... Um, could yeah. um could Mitchell Moses, like I know, like he, I think he's probably the most... Would he be the most talented seven athletic wise, skill set wise? Maybe Jerome Hughes, maybe who's probably same pace. No, physically, like speed. If you throw it, like cut out, like fucking skill wise, kicks well. He, he'd be probably only be behind Nath because I still physically Nath is so dominant. Yeah. that I put him number one. But yeah, I'd have him in front of in front of Hughesy on traits for sure. But like what he's produced. Um, on paper, it's, I put Hughesy in front of him and, and even Chez. Yeah, individually, he's he's awesome as well. But he's just like his forty meters. His forty meter dash would rapid, be so bro. fucking quick, bro. I love his blind side when he takes blind yeah. sides as well. He's great to watch. He's one of the most entertaining players to watch. But um, tough thing is, you just got to when you wear that seven, the ownership of you is on that team, and you got to get it done. And yeah. where yeah. you get it done is in October, isn't it? Yeah, and he fully understands that. And I think that's sort of like a little thing that's sort of like this little chip on his shoulder that. Um, he either needs to scratch and get it done in the next year or so, or he might be better off just moving off and find another club where he can sort of just. If you could go under the, I reckon if Mitchie was at not, not at such a big club where he could go under the radar, like Paris. But you, you, we've said this before. Paris Seven is one of the toughest positions, yeah, fucking to oath. fill because there's such expectations and all the past players start to bag you. Like yeah. it's one of those clubs, and and it's a it's a rock solid fan base where they're they're in. Like they know there's no half us fans. They want it bad. They want it bad. They've been delayed for so long. They want it so bad. So yeah. and they always say like the seven jerseys cursed over there as well. There wouldn't be out of and. Or, there's no one on a longer drought at any of the big clubs. So when you think Roosters, Para, Bulldogs, Rabbitohs, and probably Broncos, would you say Broncos are yeah, like a, a, big a club. franchise club? Because even though they come in the competition a little bit later, they're probably the five main clubs. If you were to think of like the support that they get and, yeah. and how bad they want it. And obviously Para haven't won since 86. So all that pressure keeps building on not only Mitchie and the, and the seven jersey, but you know, BA, um, Gutho was skipper. Yeah, it's all the pressure starting It's a cool little moment. I'm excited to see what what uh, Parrot, you know, and it's the Scope Cup as well. Second leg of the Scope Cup, so let's not like. I know, I know, I know. He's furious boys, yeah. out of everything, breaking the finger. I know Mitchie would be furious not to be uh, playing in such an exclusive cup. <laughs> I'm a big Mitchie Moses fan. I I disagree. I think if you've got a top five halfback in the comp, I, I think you move heaven and earth to keep him. Yeah, I don't think yeah you, that's a good point. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah replace, look, and I'm not. A, yeah, again, I'm not opposed. I don't to that, think you but, can replace Mitchell Moses right now with a better player than Mitchell Moses. So I would never even touch it. Yeah, I pay him a milli. Yeah, yeah but we, we just kind of said like, um, if you could plug a guy who's won a comp, like, yeah. a, like look what Adam Reynolds has done with the Broncos side. Yeah, I get if you chat. plugged him into Parramatta, <laughs> game over. If you plug Cherry Evans into that side with that much talent, even the Chad. I think the reality, I think the reality of like available players though, you can start to go. Oh, if yeah, you like a exactly. Brooks or Jamal Fogarty, like they do a job. But no, 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 no. We're not saying we're not Moses. saying those guys in nowhere near Mitchy Moses. Those guys, but yeah. I'm just saying if you get one of the guys who've got a ring on their finger or one sitting in their wardrobe, different, different team. Yeah. Even like a proven fuzzy, you know what I mean? Even yeah. at this point of his career with a Dylan Brown who could play seven, like I know it didn't nah, work out nah, on nah, the first stint. Now. I know it didn't work out in the first stint, but um, I think uh, yeah, you, you're not letting him go unless you get like. 
something top. grouse in, in return or you know you're going to get something grouse or use that money that you've then freed up and you spend it wisely. Could he, could he be like the Aussie version of like Eshte, like Shawnee, like individually spectacular? Yeah, yeah, is that, is that a fair the worst shout? Comp. It's yeah. not the worst comp. Yeah, so like but just might not get a ring in this time. Hopefully he does. Fucking oaf. Not everyone can win a mice. Um, <laughs> we know. Gutho signed through 2025. Got by close, the way, man. So. <laughs> Got pretty close. <laughs> Gutho is signed through 2025, but again, I don't know the ins and outs of that contract. What's a contract in NRL? No, nah, nothing yeah. these days. Exactly, yeah. Um, all right, Scope, let's move on to probably the biggest talking point, at least in the last 48 hours, is the Carrigan hip drop. So he's copped four weeks for that. Is that correct? Yeah, yep, four weeks. weeks. Um, broken Jake. Uh, Jake. Jackson broken Hastings. Jackson Hastings' ankle. Um, Two-part question. What did you make of the tackle, the suspension, and then what does it do for Brisbane not having Carrigan here for the run home? I don't like the hip drop tackle at all. Um, I didn't think it was the worst one. I didn't think it was as bad. I've watched the replays of his and Josh Maguire's, which was the example that they used. I think Josh Maguire's was um, a little more, little bit more clear cut. You could tell Paddy Carrigan knew straight away that he'd fucked up. He knew he's in drama straight away. Uh, he, again, deserves the four weeks. Um, and then the big thing that's been coming out of it is, and it comes up all the time when there's a real serious injury, injury like what happened to Jackson Hastings, do you take in what's happened to the opposition player? So Jackson Hastings is potentially going to – oh, he's definitely missing all this year and could potentially miss out on a few games in the World Cup as well. Um, Who's he playing for, England? I don't, take, for England? I don't take those into consideration for me. I, would, I don't take – you know, if a player gets injured, you because if you look at it from the other end, if Jackson Hastings wasn't injured, then like, do you not, do you not know, get my point with that? Like, yeah, to say if he does, yeah. if, if he doesn't get injured, if a broken you, you ankles, then go, you, yeah. you then don't give fucking Paddy Carrigan zero weeks. You give Paddy Carrigan still four weeks, even if he didn't get injured for the tackle, because you got to, because that's what that tackle deserved, and then <laughs> therefore, um, if he misses a shitload of time and does his ankle, is it? It's the old saying, you know, eye for an eye will make the whole world blind. Because eh? I remember when Ma- uh, Mike Sivo jammed in on Normie one time and broke his cheek, yep. and he was out for like four weeks, but Sivo got like one week. Mm. And it was like, it was accidental. Like It was just a head clash as well. So I agree with that point. You can't base it off injuries. Because if someone does their ACL, fuck, some, blue, some dude's missing six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, 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 they're just a nice grass cut. <laughs> the, the two tackles that have come up, and I, and I don't know how it wasn't, there's a couple of takes. I think we'll get to, to Nas and that, but the other one that was um, that I hate, and I think Joey was adamant about it as the well, cannonball. the yeah. cannonball tackle from Booth into Tarpano. Yeah. That, that one is disgusting. And So there's a difference between players coming in and getting the legs and like starting up high. So the rule was, when I was playing anyway, above that you knees. come in above the knees slide. and you come in and a tackle and then you can like then slide down as you go down. And there's... Um, Little variations that you can pre- that can prevent you from doing the drop tackle and making sure that you're just grabbing the legs. Booth, and and he's a he's a little guy, and this is nothing against Booth. This is just against the tackle. Yeah. He come in and clearly chopped uh, Tarps, and that's my point, right? With the injury, with the because Tarp and he gets up, you give him a fucking handful, threw him up and down, like ragdolled him. I enjoyed that too. I love when a fucking uh, one of the big boys starts like throwing someone around, like because he fucked up. Is that because you didn't have it in your game? Yeah, because I would have liked to have done it, and it happened to me on a number of occasions. I had fucking Hargraves. <laughs> Isaac, Isaac Hargraves is scary, bro. <laughs> bully. No, oh, Isaac, Isaac Luke used to love a little cannonball <laughs> just to chop him down. Yeah, so. see, Bully was fucking here, <laughs> and he used to though. and he used to fucking piss me off with it too because <laughs> he'd come in. Look at my pins. They can't. You know, I can't afford a cannonball tackle with my Bully's pins. A little, he's a little ball of cement too. No, nah, jokes think. aside, it's one of the more dangerous tackles, and it because Tarpana didn't get um. Yep. Fucking, he's not out for the season. Like, nothing was really said about it outside of... He didn't even get fucking sent off. No. And Tarpane got sent off. Like, it was a joke. So, for me, that's the more dangerous one. The hip drop one, like, playing footy, I know sometimes the momentum gets into it. Again, I'm not sticking up for Carrigan. He deserved to get the punishment that he got. But sometimes it happens when you're trying to get into a tackle late where it's like, you just... Your ass is hanging no. out. You're trying to do everything you can to no. jump onto the back of the tackle. And then you sort of... You play, it, you're it, playing it, out on the edge, Ice. You didn't get in the yeah, third you're next, man. You were next you, to no, me. You, you were no, next no, to you me. You don't get third man as much as the fucking the big boys when you're tied. And you're if I was playing a few, I'd have been you, defending that four you, man. You would have been that three. Up, you're the kicking the feet up in the fucking. Hey, I'm telling you, in the middle is when you're not ass like is that, bro. Out. Not like that. You justifying that? I don't I, really no, I'm not. I, I, I didn't justify it. I said I can understand it. I said 
Carrigan deserved what he got for that, but I can understand it more, and there's more intent in a cannonball than there is most of the time agree, agree. On, on a hip drop. That was my point. Do you know what it is? I think Stu Kerr brought up, um, said the best thing about when um, Gary Payton II done his elbow. Mm. You're breaking the code. There's a code within football players that you know, and cannonball is one of those tackles. Would you rather get ipped by Nathan Clary in that style tackle or someone do a cannonball? Well, which one would you be more angry at? So you run a knife, he picks you up, dump shot, yep. old school kind yep. of, yep. or someone that dives at your knees, which is worse. Yeah, the diving at the knees. Agree. That's the code. When you play football, there's certain things that you can't do and certain things that's within the law, but it's just an understanding between player and player. You don't dive at dudes' knees because there's ligaments and shit involved as well. Broke the code. That's breaking the code. That biting, spitting, anything along those lines, you, you should, you'd be entitled to throw yeah. them. I'll if someone about does a cannonball, well. you should be entitled to throw him in and knock him out. Yeah, exactly. And even even with the intent in it too. So obviously that's a, an extreme example of like you, also you don't want to get spear tackled. But like just say if someone clips me across the, the, the face on a head high tackle, gets me shoulder barges me right in the chin, I'll be, I'd 100% prefer that because that shit happens, right? That just, you know, we're going at each other full power. He might just like lose it. For me, cannonball, there's clear intent for I cannonball. Agree. Agree. So that's the difference. Like you're coming in to attack it. You've got a bit of time. Booth was set, seen the tackle, and then just went fucking straight at the knees. Whereas like Paddy's, he was coming from behind, tried to grab and then sort of dropped. And then again, when you refer to the other tackles, like head eye tackles, man, that's going to happen. You don't want to hap- You don't want it to happen. I don't want to get knocked out with someone's shoulder into my head, but you understand that's a part of the game. Yeah, for sure. It's like just collateral. It comes up sometimes mm. as well. So yeah, that, that cannonball tackle's got to go and treated fairly. Um, that. Who's going to miss the most just before we we'll put a bow on this as well? I was thinking Moses, and I said that on my th- – um, I think Paddy Carrigan's going to be a bigger loss than what people think because I didn't have Parramatta in the top four in my bracket. I had Pat, I had the Broncos in my top four and you can't win a competition outside of the top four. It's been proven and I don't think the Broncos will finish in the top four now that Paddy Carrigan's out. I don't, I don't mind them missing Carrigan just because I've been such a fan of the Broncos over the course of the whole year. It yep. doesn't matter who they bring in from one to 17. Someone seems to turn up for some reason as well. So I don't think they're going to miss him as much. For me, it's still clearly he's the best player in the game. It's like when Joey used to leave, like there's going to be an obviously a dip in, in performance as well. But the Moses one is probably the one I'm going to be paying the most attention to just from a contract Agreed. standpoint as well. Like Carrigan, bro, like, Payne Ass will just pick up his workload for a couple of weeks and someone will plug in. Kobe Heverington comes off. He goes yeah. good. And like, like Jordan Pereira can jump on the wing and they start to play well. Anyone that slots in that fullback at the moment seems to play well. Anyone that goes into centre. Branko Lee plays one game, picks up a contract for Redcliffe. So I think Broncos are nice and spread across the whole board. They're not so reliant on Paddy Garrigan. So for me, it's Cleary. All right, Skip. I think seeing as though we're on the topic, I might skip ahead a little bit here and we'll go straight to uh, Hargreaves and Nelson. Asano. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so sweet. They've both copped fines for for their elbows, um, I suppose, off the back of what we saw Carrigan got, and there's been a lot of talk around they perhaps should have got more. So Nelson obviously dropping it on Wade Egan was the big one. Fair or did they deserve more? They deserve more, 100%. And I love playing with guys like this. A guy that I've referred to him a couple of times, one of my favorite players to play with, with and, I, and he reminds me of these two guys, Jared Warrior Hargraves and Nelson Asafa Solomona. It's Jason King. He was an enforcer. He was fucking – I loved Yuck. playing with King. He wasn't as polarizing. He was just an angry man. And he towed the line like – he not towed the line, sorry. He always yeah, pushed, pushed the line. Pushed the line. You know, always went a little bit over um, and fucked up every now and again. And, you know, it would lead to fucking – there would be a bit of a melee every now and again and would get into it. And I'm not saying – with these boys, I love that, that that's the way they play footy. But when you get it wrong – they should. The, both of them should have been suspended Weak. because Nels may be even more, man. Nelson's one was worse. Jared's been Jared, and again, I don't condone it, and I think he should have got suspended because – Did you hear what happened? Yeah, yeah the little kid got under his skin, and I love it. <laughs> little Zachy Fulton. Give yeah. him a little spray, little mutters. I like that. Good on him for debut going up against the big dog. Is it Zach Fulton? It's Zach Fulton, Zach right? Fulton. Yeah, little Zachy Fulton, little mutters playing eight. Looks like he's just come from Glenmore Park A grade. <laughs> Rolls up, plays first grade, gets he into Jared. Giggle, love man. it. Love it. Right, got under his skin. Jared went too far because he couldn't handle it. But he fucked up and he should have got suspended for me. He should have, Jared's probably one game for me because, um, you know, when he was on top of, uh, he, you know, he'd fucking run over top of him at that point and he'd, um, you know, fucking little Zachy Fulton's <laughs> hanging on <laughs> and he comes over the top. He gives him a bit of an elbow, but it wasn't like a raised one. It was just continuous, like it was pushing. 
He didn't like drop it, but he was. That's all right. The intent's there. That's all right, Skip. It's a hundred percent in his. Don't his bring face. down my finals hopes, Skip. On his face, mate. You're a fucking fair weather Roosters fan, anyway. <laughs> so like this, and and he was, and it was a little bit in it. It was like three or four of the best. So just say if he dropped it, pushed it in, and I've, like we've all like I've played as well. I, could, I, I had a, a, a little bit of shit in me, right? So I understand that these some these sorts of contacts happen sometimes. But he kept on going on with it, and and there's intent. That's it, the big word, intent. Is it, is it a week? One week for Jared. <sighs> it's a fine. One one week for Jared for sure. Someone Nelson, else. Nelson. Nelson. You no, know, so even if it was someone else, like there's intent, so he deserved a week. Nelson. Bruh, that was bad for me, and I love Big Nelson. And Nelson, scary. Okay, so. <laughs> Let me let's get Take that. Take this of a grain of salt. Yeah, yeah. Even before that, skip, he'd had a five minutes of doom. He'd had a, yeah. a dangerous tackle in there. He shot up out of the Nelson line. Nelson always pushes it. Yeah. But again, That's I'd love to want. play with that, guys. That's what you yeah. want. And once again, I'm scared of him. But <laughs> no, it's like when I ran into him uh, up at Byron. I'll tell you a quick story. When we're up in Byron and he was going to fight last, we end up running into Big Nelson. He was across the street, me and Normie. And uh, we're like, oh, fuck, there's now. So he ran, out, ran across the street, go shake his hand. He goes, what's up with your boy Larson? I went, ooh. <laughs> I said, no, no, leave me out of it. Anyway, yeah, but Nelson, minimum of two weeks for that. Um, Wade Egan looks to be playing. I think he had to go to the dentist. I don't know if that was like a bit built up, but he didn't, we didn't come no, back. He, he's what broken, he, he come he back broke, on and played um, six, didn't he? Yeah, he's been named at six this week too. But he, he come back teeth. on and played. Yeah, we'll get to that. Great two cavity. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah now, again, intent, he... They said that fucking Felice, uh, the description was awful from Luke Patton, by yeah. the way. Um, the reasonings. Again, like going, going back to your wife, Jack, oh, fuck, they, they do get the awful rub of the green, man. Like some, the refereeing over the past two to three weeks has been pretty average. Two to three decades. Two, <laughs> yeah, it's been average. Like, and we spoke about it last week. There's not like really a clear cut, like who's going to be the guy like in an important moment. I don't think any of them, any of the referees, have got fuck all confidence at the moment. I'll read you uh, the NRL's description of Nelson just quickly. Yeah, go on oh, for a giggle. Scope, for a giggle. So they say it here. First of all, we identified that there was an extra player, Kafusi, contributing to the force of the tackle, mm. and it was two big men on a smaller man. That's what old uh, the general Luke Patton said. Yep. We identified that Nelson creates space. There was no crusher, however, and no force applied to Egan's neck. Ooh. Therefore, there were a couple of other factors in order to clear this tackle. Firstly, there was no head slam involved. There was no separation between Rice, Nelson's right arm and Egan's throw to the ground. He had a good grip on him and got clear separation, whereas the head slam, you see the player isolated and banged into the turf. We have cleared it because his arm does not separate from Egan. Clear point of that is the creates he – where they said he creates separation as yep. well. When you're a footy player, like a thing, like when you tackle, you're in tight, you tuck in, you wait for your guys to come in. Yep. When you're trying to hurt someone and you've got them tight, you know, you do that little create yeah. space and you go again as yeah. well. And with the point that Scope brought up is intent. Yeah. You can get done for attempted murder. Like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So there's <laughs> intent there to. That to was hurt almost the... attempted murder on poor little Wade Egan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got him with the cavity. Yeah. Now, I agree with Scope. I think one, would you say two weeks? I like two weeks for now. Two Nels. weeks is fair. One week for Jared. Two weeks, and a couple of old school props just getting about. A yeah, couple of vets sweet. doing their and thing. Again, you love fucking enforcers. Like you can when play, you play with those guys, it's the grouse. But if they fuck up and they go too far, they've got to be punished. You, you can play the game tough without doing that stuff, eh? Yeah. yeah you, you can, D2 well, I, my... I didn't play it tough. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. Yeah, I've yeah seen but I've seen it. it. I've, I've seen, seen it firsthand. First Jason King. <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of like um, D2 Mighty Ducks and I got the enforcers that come in. You want enforcers. The Bash to, Brothers. The Bash Brothers. Mm. You want those guys to come in and be intimidating. Because Jared Weir Hargraves, like, I've played against them since I was like 19. Every time I play Jared and I know him like personally, I used to just look up and go, fuck, where's Jared? Where's Jared? And that's the intimidation factor that they have. And sometimes he pushes it too far. And saying that, when Jared was a young buck, he was, he was going up against Seven Deceiver over in New Zealand versus Aussie. And he was saying the same stuff. Yeah, he enjoys the um, he enjoy enforcer role. Like, yeah. He used to call me out all the time, bro, because I don't know, like... Is he anti-Kiwi anti, anti -Kiwi boys, eh? He wants oh, to try and smash all the Kiwi boys. No, I don't know, like, because we had a bit of an incident in the grand final as well. Um, I, used to, I, didn't, I didn't mind, like, because I used to, like, again, jokes aside, like, I really didn't mind getting into it as well. Like, I used to have a bit of niggle in me, so if Jared, Jared would be the type of guy that would fucking, you know, bag my legs or fucking, you know, <laughs> rip me about being fucking soft and shit. So then it would piss me off and then I'd try to run him. Get, I'd get wrist old, but at least I'd fucking have a crack. So That big sternum guard he rocks too makes him like a little bit scarier as well. But I, and then I used to try yeah, to shoot from C. Yeah. <laughs> I used to try to shoot from C and try to get him to. Didn't, didn't, 
yeah, didn't I, get him. You know when you try and shoot from C and he sees you and just go, bang, yeah, fuck. Yeah. That's one of the worst contacts you can have. Eh, yeah. when I got Sammy Burgess degree. bad on one of them. And again, bully. He was involved. Slapped me on the head when I was concussing. I was trying to get up. <laughs> Nothing worse than when you try to get a guy from the outside, turn around, boom. Got a little bully going, shame boy. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he did. Something like that, bro, and slapped me on the head yeah. while I was concussed. All right, let's Shout out Bully, one of the Shout greats. Out. Shout out Bully, one of the greats. Hey, one of the greats on Twitter too. He's, he hates a tweet. He's on been bully. running amok in socials lately, hasn't he? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, good he stirs it up too. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Um, Ice, right, let's start with you here. The August 1 transfer window has been a lot spoken about. So just for a bit of context, the June 30 was moved because of COVID. So it was pushed back to August 1 when teams were trying to fill their rosters yep. over the last couple of years. Uh, Valandis has basically already come out and said that he wants to roll it back to June 30 because he hates the late season switches. Uh, what did you make of it with regards to an offer, et cetera? Do you like August 1 or would you rather see June 30 or I think it a trade window off season? Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, I, I, I like the mid-season transfers as well. Yeah. It gives Because um, uh, we're a fan of American sports, so you're obviously 10 times a bigger fan than I am. But I love the changing narratives. I think rugby League's a great drama show as it is. So I do love it for multiple reasons. One, like a team like Melbourne, they can recruit some guys that aren't really playing and get them up. And the other side of it as well, players can – go to clubs like Harry Grant's the best example of a player that was too good for reserve grade that should be playing first grade and I know this isn't around the mid-season transfer but they do it over in Super League where players go to yeah. other clubs and get first grade experience you're not going to get that in reserve grade around here because the competition is getting worse we've watched a couple games over there it's getting bad so I like it for multiple different reasons it gives final teams who are actually going to have a crack better it gives people like North Loma an opportunity to play in finals which he hasn't and he's too good so many good narratives around it and sometimes relationships just don't work out between player and club and they got to move on and and that mid-season transfer window <clears throat> allows to do that it's better than sitting around kicking stones and dragging down the whole club as well so I love everything about it yeah I love it as well um the biggest thing to come out of it is like maybe so Ever, I think most people in agreement that maybe August 1st is too late. Yeah, too late. June 30. I'd like to meet halfway. So the 13th of July is the last Origin game, game three of Origin. Um, after that, there's a lot of wear and tear. Like once you get through that Origin period and bye weeks, um, some teams have had to play more than others. Like Penrith's the prime example. They, they're they going to go through the next two or three years and have seven guys in Origin. Either potentially um, a shitload of them are either like fucking fatigued from origin or they've played some guys and, and they've had to go deep into their squad. Again, the Cowboys are another example this year. Um, I don't mind a week, a weekly transfer window the week after origin. So That's it goes cool. from the like 13th of July to the 20th of July. That'd be sick. That's and then perfect. it's done. So you got one week and it one week, everyone's it. on board, everyone knows. Teams can reassess themselves after the origin period and go, all right, fuck, you know, we've. We've had to use, for again, example, um, the Cowboys come out of the origin period. Uh, they had to use a few youngsters. Uh, Hylam Lukey gets injured, does his ACL. Fuck, where can we get? We need a player to fill that. Luciano Leilua, like identify Luciano. He ends up coming up to the Cowboys. And again, um, they can just re, you can just reassess your squad after the origin period and see where you're at. Uh, it's clear cut. Everyone will know it's on. The media and content can get around it. There'll be money involved because, as you know, uh, again, like I alluded to, love my NBA. I know um, the the like whenever a transfer window happens in uh, the NFL or the NBA, all my mates who love our fantasy, we start texting each other like, "Oh, who's going to be traded? Uh, how does it affect your fantasy squads and all that sort of stuff?" And then also, you know, as much as we want to push away gambling's involved in the game these days like money all those all these things Tyson's it's so enticing so maybe uh, a week after the origin period is a transfer window where everyone's on board it'd be the most hectic week yeah it'd be sick and there'd be so much fucking chat around it you know who would run that transfer window too it'd be Gus he'd be be working all year and he'd nail the transfer window and it'd be important it'd be it it could like if if teams get uh, get it right could be the difference between make and break. Like if it's a close competition, a player or two can swing it. Like David Nofaluma now is the perfect example for me. When I was looking at the Storm a couple of weeks ago, I was going, man, they're outside backs. They struggle a little bit with the wingers that they got at the moment um, and then Meany having to play fullback. But again, I give them I give them more of a chance now with Nofaluma and Xavier Coates coming back from, from injury than I ever did like fucking two weeks ago when I was thinking about it. So... Uh, Give us your Luke Brooks take with Melbourne. Oh yeah, so this is good. This is good. I enjoyed this one. Yeah, so um, 
I was thinking uh, a couple of days ago, uh, one trade that I would like to have seen is the guy that we've, he gets talked about more than more than anyone is is Luke Brooks. For, so for the Tigers, um, you know, hasn't played in, in many important games. Injured, injured at the moment, He's, though. But yeah, injured at the moment. If he was fit, obviously, and, and Melbourne knew he was going to come back and play a pivotal role, I would have been interested to see if Melbourne could have taken on his contract at about, I don't know, so he's on a mill, so they probably would have to absorb in an eight-week period, it might have been about 200000 if they had that in the cap, play him on the left edge at six and move Munster back to fullback. And then Tigers can see what it's like without Luke Brooks as yep. well, so they would have been experimenting, not on their dollar. Yep, they, um, they, would, they would have got 200, back, 200 grand back in, in with regards to Brooks. So Brooks and they own for Harry Grant, and surely. <laughs> <laughs> They're in debt for Harry Grant that season. Momorowski was all right. Momorowski's yeah, all right, but yeah. he ain't Harry Grant. He, got a comp. he, he ain't. Mom's got a comp. Is it Stan or someone's done like a little documentary on that swap? Have you seen that? No. Short? No. I'll, I'll pull it up. But there's there's a someone's done a doco. It's like sitting down with Harry Grant and Momorowski about. It's called the swap. Oh, yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. I think it's a Stan thing. I'll double check. Shout out right. Stan. Yeah. Doing yeah so Brooks goes to Melbourne. Munster moves back to fullback. If they could manage to jag Noffa. That'd be even better, but I really think it would catapult Melbourne for me from being probably I've got them about fourth or fifth in terms of chances to win the comp. I think they slide all the way back up to second, and we see the best of Luke Brooks. Uh, they get o- the Tigers. Come- the Tigers get two hundred grand relief on their salary cap. And to see what life without Luke Brooks is probably yep. the most important one as well because that's what they're scared of. Sometimes when you let people go, you just go, you feel like it's better without them as well. So Tigers could have done that. And then other teams might have seen what would have happened if you put Luke Brooks in a good system, what Great. could happen. And then maybe those teams that are 50-50 on Luke Brooks, whether to bring him in uh, for half the salary, pay half the salary and, and let the Tigers pay half the salary – um, I think it might have worked out for everyone, including Luke Brooks, and it would have been really intriguing to see. But that was just something that I just fucking – I'm a wizard. Nice get. Uh, oh, hey, that's one of your best takes. Thank there. you. There was also – uh, forgive me, it's not standard. It's by the NRL. You can watch it on YouTube now. It's called The Swap. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's a sit down with Mama Ross. Does it feel like it's not as cool when the NRL make it for yeah, some reason? I don't know why. Yeah, it's lost me now. <laughs> <laughs> it's very well lit. looks mad. So, yeah. Even like a, a KO of KO made it. You're like, fuck, that would be cool. Yeah. Oh, you'd probably be able to get it on KO as well. I just saw it on YouTube then. All right, let's move on. Uh, scope to your bird gang. Obviously, it was the week of doom. Shout out James Chico Sigiaro for the comeback too. Uh, Manly have a, allegedly, according to Buzz, They're held done. the um, in-house meeting. Did the week that was skip, has it cost them a finals berth with all the drama? Start playing him at Monday, man. Get that boat ready. Hmm? Skip, you with me, Skip? I, I had a few beers with the skipper on the weekend, okay? <laughs> and I've... And uh, first and foremost, I thought he you know, handled himself really well. It was a really tough week for him. I won't get into the details of what we spoke about. But I have a feeling me, mate, Daly Chair Evans, a skipper, is really going to galvanise the boys, get them together. They've had a meeting already. I think I believe it was med- uh, mediated. Sunday was the I was going to say uh... meditated there. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice for the boys. Yeah, just a bit of meditation, some crystallisation. <laughs> Chico's bringing the crystals in. Visualisation. <laughs> Independent mediator came in and apparently sat down with both sides and they, uh, their um, mediators are really they're good. They're really good, man. Yeah, yeah. I think was, when it's a polarizing issue as well, it's important. Oh, yeah, big time. Of man. course. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, interesting. Uh, for me, uh, I didn't really see Manly making too much of a push, respectfully, to the boys, to the Burr gang. Um, but I, I think this almost puts a line in this season because the, the competition's hard enough as it is. Teams yeah. are too good now. Without that underlying riff or that undercurrent of political tones or whatever they've gone through over the past week, I just think it's going to sit there and linger. And I know DCE is one of the great captains and one of the great speakers like that, but he'll, he'll be doing his best along with Fozzie and Jakey. They'll be ripping in, but I don't know. For me... We'll find out straight away. We're going to find out on Friday night where they are. No, if, they knock off, if they knock off Parramatta um, and they play, it's not, they don't have to flog them. They don't have to, uh, you know, win by a point. There's just got to be, you got to, there's, because they were building before the Dragons game and they missed Jakey, Andrew Davey, and Croker in that game. The last four, three or four weeks, they, look all right, they, eh? was, they were really building. They started mm. to find their identity on the right edge. Uh, in particular with Olakowatu and Kola. I just want to see if that's reignited straight away. Um, another part, uh, before we'll get to that when we, when we talk about the breakdown of the, the preview of the Seagulls game. But yeah, we'll see if, there's, if the connection there's, is there straight away because um, five, 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 five out of the seven boys are coming in. So 
Yeah, we'll get we'll get we'll get our answer straight away on Friday night, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, the Scope I, Cup and return league. Respectfully, the couple of teams that are just above them, I feel like they're just moving a little bit more nicely. Yeah, yeah. no pressure, no external pressure, and then Raiders are putting and, pressure on them as well, and no locker room pressure as well, which mm. is all really important. Like a happy team is so important. Happy locker room is really important. Raiders have got a soft a soft draw compared to uh, they're at nine. And they got now Manly because that that no be, Manly are playing pretty much all the big dogs. Speaking of those teams, ice ahead of them cruising. A couple that have, are getting a little bit slipped on is probably the Cowboys and the Sharks. Scope, with regards to how they've been in the last few weeks, are you? do you think they're getting the sort of respect they deserve and have they cemented themselves in that final four for you? Fair. I, I think Cowboys, fair. Yeah, I think Cowboys, I think fair. And I'll be the first to – I had a few people reach out to me about my bracket with regards to South. I said, South, we're going to – my better the week. Sharkies did them and – Credit where it's due. Like I didn't think they were going to be able to get the job done with um, Vanukin, who was you know going to miss three weeks. I thought he was important, and, and they really missed him when he was out through the middle part of the uh, season. And Sione Katoa, um, I still think Connor Tracy, man, he's such <laughs> a good player. Uh, and, but I just I have a feeling it's going to show up in a big game. Like and and I and I hope it doesn't because I like to see all players go well. I just think. Um, He's just one of those guys that you'd love to have in your 17. I think one guy took it, uh, messaged me on Instagram, and it was in all in good fun. But he's just like that. I didn't. I don't put enough respect on Connor Tracy. I love Connor Tracy. Like reminds me of uh, Corey Thompson a little bit. Like fan favorite. Like, obviously, under never, yeah, never let you down. Yeah, never let you down. Do a job and some. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if 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 he was to be, he's like almost the perfect 17 in this day and age too. Especially because with them, because they play with such a big bench, they normally have three middles outside of whoever that 14 or 17. Sometimes they roll with four big boys on the bench, and like Teague Wilton, you, you got you Bopper and Royce Hunt. Yeah, they yeah. go Andrew Fafita. They might on some occasions, not always. Yeah. They have Royce Hunt. Um, Big Bopper. Valley. Yeah, and then Teague Wilton might be on the bench with them. Like, and they don't have an out and out 14. So, <clears throat> or McGinnis has been coming off the bench, but he's been playing middle as well. So, he's a nice swing player to have. I just think, um, yeah, I just thought that they were going to be lacking in that area, and he did fucking such a great job uh, against South because that left edge has been on fire. I thought they were going to expose him on the wing. They didn't. So, for me, um, for me, I haven't given the Sharks enough credit. This is me giving them credit now. I think I've been pretty on the Cowboys now for – I think we all have leading into Origin with all the players that they've represented in Origin. Because you look at the Sharkies, right? No one. I don't – Nico Hines was the only one that was – Talakai. Uh, uh, Talakai. Yeah, there you go. Whereas the Cowboys, they had seven seven or eight players represented inside of Origin. So We're at Manly – we had the Manly game on Thursday and I was sitting next to Matty Moreland. I had a few. I was like, fuck, South's going to pump you. <laughs> He was, he was he really goes, quietly confident. No, nah, he goes, he goes, fuck up, idiot. <laughs> so that's what happened to my fucking room. Yeah. <laughs> and Scope was sitting right in front of me. He said, ah, oh, Scope, he said the same thing on the podcast too. <laughs> so shout out Matty Moylan on yeah, fire. Out, Moise. Yeah, Moyes is killing it, man. Like, Good team, again, man. Him and, him, and, um, him and Nico, they've got, a uni- they've got a really unique, they like to play footy. They love the shift to shift sort of footy. When that gets a bit clunky and teams have rushed them and thrown them off a little bit, it's, they've had really bad. So the thing is with the Sharks, when, when it doesn't go right, looks ugly. Eh? they've had really like ugly performances. So um, that's the thing uh, that sort of concerns me the most, but looks like they'll lock up a top four position now with that win over the Rabbitohs. The thing I love about Nico Hines and Matty Moylan is they both can play seven and six yep. the same. Like yeah. you look at a lot of teams that have a traditional seven and a ball running six, like very much old school. They're, they're both as good at first receiver and second receiver. And to be fair, probably the two of the best five three on two players there we have in the comp as well. They can strip a three on two like, like better than most as well. So they're right up there. Um, and they make them diverse when you look up, like, where's all the boys? Yeah, where exactly. are they all coming from? It's hard to defend. And that's why you see the Sharks just walk tries over. Yeah. Very much like Selves. Like Selves, yeah. you've seen them, they're not rushing to a corner and trying to beat the fullback or run over a fullback or do big dives. Those teams kind of just walk um, teams over. It's because their halves are so good. The reason it's so hard to defend that shift to shift too as well with what Ice is talking about, alluding to where they can play both short and long, is that they'll get to a field position on like, if you watch this when they play this week, they can go from one side of the field all the way to another, maybe end up on the tram because they don't completely get across to the sideline. And then, like Ice is alluding to, they can play short side, so they can go. Matty Moylan can play down the short side if he gets, just say, a, a middle might be defending on the short side. They identify that. Moyes has done it. Fuck, I, 
I can't even name on one hand how many times he's gone down a short side with a middle stand in front of him, put Teague Wilton over, and people are like, fuck, Teague Wilton's gone over untouched. It's because Matty Moylan identified a, a weak A defender. But then when it's not on, because they've set up well and they've got winger, centre, half, and they're in a good position, defensive line set, all right, guess what? We're, now we're going to swing back and play uh, shot for shot and go back the other side. So to have guys that can play both sides of the f- uh, footy and then also not afraid to link up and play seven and six, they don't care who's on the ball. Um, they, that's they, what makes them so dangerous. They take the um, points board over as well individually. Like they score tries. Yeah. They take them over by four. They're not scared to run. Run fucking over. And when, when you're in form and you're a half, you're running, you're not scared of contact or getting injured or what's in front of you. You just, like when you're playing light and free, running just becomes a part of it as well, which opens up a pass later. So scary. Yeah, they're, they're tough to beat out there at Shark Park too. They so are, if man. They, if they can finish right up there, the more games they get at home, I think it's going to be important. I had them finishing top four all year. They that's were my fa- smoky skip. That's so a, you've that's mentioned a good, that four weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good. That's a weird place to you've play. Yeah, you got to bring up the receipts when you're right, Jack. Hey, hey, when you're right, it yeah, doesn't happen that much for me. So I know. Like to say I'm right. It's yeah. a good place to play because, like, within Sydney, like it's still like a little bit out the way where yeah. some teams won't stay the night in Cronulla as well. So it adds an extra two, three hours onto your game game day because you yeah, might true. leave a little bit early, go stay in a, park up at a hotel for the afternoon and you might get a room or you might have to hang around in the team room. A bit like Manly back in the day yeah, when they yeah. go to Brookie. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So it's important to win your games at home. It's really important. Like it just, there's such a better feeling than when you walk, walk off the field at home, all the home fans are clapping you. You call it a fortress. You know, you get together in captain's run, you talk about protecting your fucking soil, all that sort of stuff. Um, I think teams that do that well and do that at a high click, and it serves them really well at the back end of the year. All right, guys, before we get into the preview, we're going to um, thank and shout out, <laughs> a shout out to our sponsor, Manscaped, the king of the crotch comfort. Manscaped has spent the two years designing the most comfortable boxes briefs out. I've had the honor of testing these out in these new boxes, and I can say it's the softest fabric of any underwear. So breathable, and it's like it's gills from your groin. What does that mean? Who's writing his ad reads? <laughs> Manscaped, get on. Use our code ICE, 20% off, and use free shipping as well. I give it a little bit of trim the other day too. How do you feel? Better? Yeah, Nusha, Nusha enjoyed it. Yeah. Slip streaming at a <laughs> senior swim club. <laughs> you know when your mate dates a girl for so long, like the thought of it, like you just see them as, do you know, do you know what I'm talking Did about? Did you just picture it? In a, in yeah, yuck. yeah. Like you just see Nusha as like a friend now. So, oh. yeah, she doesn't deserve that. Well, the She's old parents having sex. <laughs> All right, let's get preview time. Yep. Sydney Cricket Ground Roosters taking on the Brisbane Broncos. Roosters are favourites. The line is minus four and a half. And the over or under we're getting here enough. from your boys at Top Sport is 43 and a half. Skip, Sal and Cobbo, straight back in. That's the big in for the Brisbane Broncos. What do you got here? Yeah, before we get into the Roosters, um, I just really like, and I, and I hope yeah, this is sort of what happened with, uh, with regards to Cobbo, who uh, obviously come off that really big knock straight away in the decider. Um, it's, he's been on the sidelines now for two or three weeks, and uh, and. Uh, for me, um, unless he's really had, uh, like, if he's had a result, like, if he's had um, symptoms of, you know, feeling sick or headaches or anything like that, I just like what Broncos have done and really taken their time and getting it right. Because um, when you look at, again at the team that they're playing, guys like Luke Keary and, and Jake Friend and Boyd Cordner, who have played in big games consistently, and, you know, maybe. In this day and age, I think the rule is to come back after a week. I think um, the Broncos, and this is what you're alluding to at the start of the show, Ice, about the Broncos just being well served, got really good depth through the guards to, you know, being able to fill the spot of Carrigan, but also fill the spot of Cobbo for three weeks. Um, guys like Deloise Hoyter and and uh, Dean Mariner, who who made his debut on the weekend, looks to be a real player. So um, shout out to, I, I believe, I'm not 100% on this, but I think Broncos, Benny Ike and Kevin Walters done a really good job of just letting Cobo get back to full health before they bring him back from that concussion because he's going to have a he's going to be a really important player for him. A bit like Caitlin Ponger is for the Newcastle Knights. It's important that Cobo is healthy, gets his head right at this stage of his career, and um, making sure he's ready to go against the Roosters. Agree, agree. All right, let's get into the Roosters. Um, for me, uh, you know, as, as as you know, us we're out at the game. There was such a like weird feeling. There was such a a weird build-up for the Roosters. I thought they did a good job considering they come out firing at the start of the game, sort of plateaued a little bit, but like I said, there was like weird energy around the stadium because of what happened, and it's really hard to play when there's so many distractions like that in, 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 in a week leading up to the game. Sorry, I remember one time when um, Melbourne played, after Melbourne got done with the salary cap, the Roosters played them the next day. I mean, Warriors played them the next game. Yeah. Fucking got wristled. Oh, did they? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, like... 
shout out. Like, I'm proud of what Manly did, but also hundred. It, it's, it would have been a really tough game for the Roosters because they they were flowing. Um, they've been playing some really good footy. I think they're obviously trending up. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more on. But um, with regards to their team, when I was looking, watching their team flow on the weekend, uh, seeing them live, there's a real um, there's a real point for them. They want to go through the middle. So at the start of the year, we're talking about them going too lateral. A couple of games stand out. Their focus is, and, and it's you, it's evident when you watch Teddy live that. Mate, any time there's a quick play of the ball, him or Verrills, they're basically getting in dummy half, jumping out. Uh, Connor Watson comes on and does the same sort of thing. Victor Radley's getting the ball one off the ruck and playing direct and, and playing short, and they want to mm. really expose the ruck. They want to play really fast footy. Um, I think it's time for Joseph Suwala'i's prog- progression uh, for him and the Roosters, and I think this could be the final little touch that can make them... Premiership favourites. Not favourites, but premiership, premiership contenders. <laughs> I reckon move Joseph Suwala'i to left centre, uh, leave Joey and really have, because they want to play through the middle. Like you can see that there's an intent to play through the middle, for me anyway. Um, therefore, I think it's a bit of a waste having Joey um, and Joey on the same, same edge. As, as cool as it looks live, I was, just, I was watching them sometimes just like, Defending next to each other. That uniform looks nice. Oh, dude. it's a good looking. <laughs> edge, and you know, yeah. and you know when you're on an edge like that, like when, so when you when you're lucky enough to play, when you got a couple of fucking thoroughbreds like that all on the right edge, you look over and go, "Kitties." Like me with Georgie Defour <laughs> and Steve Maddow. Whenever I, every now and again, I just look over in the left and go, "This is going to be a pleasure today." You know, like I was looking, I was looking at Joey and, and both Joeys, and um, I was like, you know what? He's obviously they're going to take his time with him again. He's 18 years old. It's a bit like the, the Cobo argument, who they're playing as well. They're eventually going to move in closer. I wouldn't. More, I think. I think it gives them a better chance because you can put you can put anyone outside of Joey Manu and put the skip out there. Yeah, I could. I could score one or two against the fucking not the Broncos, but maybe two I could score against two Broncos. against the Titans <laughs> playing outside Joey Manu. So. Put, put Joey, Joseph Suolai. Momorowski's played switch between centre and wing, or if it's not him, um, you know, find another winger because I just think uh, the progression of Joseph Suolai is eventually going to be closer to the ball. Therefore, they can still play that direct um, in, uh, footy through the middle like they want to play. And then rather than go on the shift to shift, which they do eventually, that looks a bit clunky. It's the clunkiest form of their footy, actually, it's which used to be their strength. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. used to play it really well. Now they do their best work when they cut through the middle and they like... And you think about some of the tries that Joseph Manu scored uh, when they scored against the... Even when they figured it out. I think they figured it out against the Panthers um, when Joey Manu went through a little flick pass... Um, to Teddy, Teddy goes through, links up with someone. Maybe Sammy yeah, Walker scores well, on that's the end. Something like that. a lot pushing up through the middle. Sammy yeah. Walker. So what you do is, if you have Joey, halves. if you have a strike on one side, I think they really. Um, obviously, everyone knows that they favour the right side because you got, and this is respectfully because Toops is a uh, Toops is gun. Toops is going to be Toops. Toops is but nice. Momorowski's not as as polarising as if you have Joseph Sawali on one side and Joey Manu on the other. You go bang, 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 bang through the middle like they really want to. And then once they get that quick play the ball through Jared or Radley, you look up, you count your numbers, fullbacks on the left side, all right, we're going to Joey Manu. You look up again, all right, fullbacks try to adjust to what happened the play before. Now we go to Suolati on the left edge with Daniel Tupa, who I think, imagine seeing them two on the same edge as well. And then kick into that. A bit imagine, of a kicking target. Oh, again, <laughs> referring back to the skip. And Mudders Hutchinson, like, oh, Skip could come on and play six and put one somehow and, and get no, a result no, with Joseph no. Suolati and uh, no, Daniel Tubo on one edge. As long as you landed in, in the field of play. No, oh, no, like, no, and, no. and I'm the shin kicker of doom as well. <laughs> but I, I'm telling you, you give me those two out there on the left edge. Uh, I just think uh, eventually I think that'll be the plan for him to play centres moving closer. Um, there's, ch- you know, obviously the chat around Joey Manu moving closer as well. I like Sammy Walker, Kiri, and then give me jo- give me the two Joeys on on either side. I think Joey squared in the centres would like that. Yeah, no, I actually agree with Scope as well. I think he's he's too good for to be on that wing. One great thing about it as well, when you get onto the final, you can kick from the middle of the field. You can go right to um, Suali, or you could go left to Tupo as well. So there's not many teams that have their dual thread out wide. Where they're probably going to jump over the top of you. And the good thing about it is you can kick from a shorter percentage as well. I think the reason why they're so clunky is because I. Love Sammy Walker, but he's just not that style of player. When it was smooth, it was Cooper Cronk. 
Luke Carey, nice and square, nice mm. and square. Well, now Carey's gone into the seven. He's playing nice and square. And even though Sammy Walker can strip three on twos or dig deep into the line, not scared to run, it's just not his natural form of football as well. So that's why it's a little bit clunky. But the reason why I like Scope's take on having Joey Marnie and Joseph um, Suali out there as well is because when you're on an edge and you've got a fucking strike center, you go like that, you look up and you see, oh, he's wide. It actually pulls your defense thing a little bit wider. And what does that do? makes bigger spaces through the middle where the roosters want to come through as well. So I agree with all those takes and look, you're actually looking forward to this game. This, yeah. is, this is probably one we should have companioned. Yeah. Still time. That would have been nice. Um, but we'll, yeah, there's plenty of good games coming up. Don't worry about it. One, one thing, sorry, one thing about the roosters is there are a couple outs of Egan Butcher and Lindsay, Lindsay Collins as well. Mm. Lin, I think Lindsay's really important for us because yeah, he's the big body, but he's got leg speed behind him as well where he can cover that base where Matty Lodge is strong and tough and so is Jared and two of the toughest props getting about. Don't get me wrong, but we kind of miss that leg speed there as a starting prop. So, and I know Lindsay's not the quickest guy, but he's quicker than those other two. Yeah, and another little thing with regards to Suolati before we move on to the Bronx is um, we all applaud him. I think everyone respects how often he gets in for a tough carry. He loves getting in there and because that's the winger's job this day and age. Whereas if you leave him fresh to – he's still going to get in and have those carries because carries he's that type of kid. He, he loves all the tough shit. Um, you know, Freddie spoke about a conversation that he had with Regan Campbell-Gillard and Junior Polo at the start of the year with regards to why I picked him in the squad, about how he went straight through the middle. But if you save him, give him a little bit more juice, I think it'll also bring out the best in him as well. Get Momorowski and fucking Toops to do those shit tough carries. Toops does it the best. He's one of the best tough carries He's a long in the competition. Tackle. Yeah. So if you can get maybe someone else on that, you know, even if it's Momorowski where it's – you give up a couple of metres – with regards to like the difference between him, him and Suolai taking those yardage carries, and you have um, Joseph Manu and Joseph Suolai, a little bit fresher in good ball, ready to go, some nice clean ball. Because I love his skill, man. Like when I look at Joseph Suolai, and I, I think what's I, the Suolai count in this podcast? You reckon, Jacko? <laughs> I think <laughs> to get a little counter going in the bottom corner. <laughs> Let's make up for it, Joseph Manu, Joseph Manu, Joseph Manu. No, um, when I look at him, he reminds me so much of a hybrid of. Jared Hayne and Israel Folau. So he's got that big um, rangy body shape that Izzy used to have, good skill, holds the ball in one hand, but he's also got like really nice hands. And you even see it, it's even evident on kick returns when they'll Chez tried to kick into his corner a couple of times and they really wanted Chez's, you could see Chez's intent was to put him in the corners and try to keep him down there. He'd get the ball, throw it fucking 30 metres across the field and hit Teddy on the chest. Like, I know wingers do that these days, but for me, those are little minor details that I watch when I watch the game. I'm like, that shit's silky. And then if he was to do that and you give him a little bit more uh, freedom or he's a little bit fresher in, in good ball, man, those little, I know it's not going to be a long pass, but just the nice little soft hands that Latrell used to have on that left edge for him as well could be the difference between them going a little did, bit further. Did you see um, Kim Amalo tried to do that to Dane Laurie on the weekend too? <laughs> <laughs> Threw it about 30 metres over his head. It's not, it's not kidding. easy. I no, know. That's, that's my point. My yeah, point is it's like, not easy, he, yeah. It's, so not hard to throw, makes, it's not hard to throw 30. So while he makes shit like that look easy. For you, you're a half, but wingers, <laughs> generally, wingers. Kenny, Kenny going that was a short ball for the Iceman back in the day. Um, Can you make oh, so who, seriously? <laughs> yeah. Who are you? Uh, who, are you taking this, who are you taking this? Uh, one before let's get in the Broncos. All right. Go, so go, go. Uh, yeah, I'm, I want to give both teams obviously get in the Broncos. I think Ezra that, Man fan club. Yeah, love Ezra Man. Uh, even especially when he gets over the jam, Ezra Man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that Bronco, <laughs> Broncos <Ezra> got <laughs> Broncos. Kempi talks about it all the time. The ambush. They got the Broncos reverse ambushed They're by the ambushed, Tigers. Yeah. They legit. The Tigers deserve to get the win over them because they were just a little bit off. Like, the, the Broncos have been that team. They're in, they're in the four. Uh, they've done a really good job of um, uh, players filling in. And, and they, they, they were relatively fit. Like when you look at their team. Good enough. Um, Herbie Farn, Farnworth is a, is, is a guy that's been out for a minute. Obviously, Dean Mariner gets a shot. But like Branko Lee, so it's, it's not really big out. I'd prefer to see Tamari Martin over Tessie New. I don't know what's happened Ooh, there. He's signing um, at the Warriors. I, yeah, I, I, I hope that's not the reason. I hope you. I hope that's not the reason because I know he missed a game for injury a couple of weeks ago. Um, because Tamari Martin, I think he was undefeated there for like five or six games at one point, mm. and playing. You're really, saying over Tessie New. Over moment. Tessie New, I, I would. Think Tessie's, I think Tessie's playing career best. Yeah, career. career he's playing I, really good. But yeah. you, sometimes you got to look at the team as yep. well. It's right. kind of almost like the Mitch Moses argument. Like individually, they look awesome, and they get. But like I agree with Scope. When Tamari Martin's at fullback, I feel like they just feel like a better team. Yep. Really? Because you the, agree. I um I think 
I think Tamari Martin in particular really suits uh, Reynolds. No, Ezra Man. Because it, it, it's, it's good as much as I love Ezra Mam at this point in his career, he's a runner. I love it when he runs. He supports through the middle. He's one of those sorts of players. Where if you had a guy like Billy Walters, I'd probably prefer to have Tessie New if that makes sense. Yeah, because makes Tessie New is more of a runner. Um, you know, he's not really good. I think there was a couple of opportunities um, where he could have put uh, Delaware's Hoiter over with just a nice little short long that Tamari Martin was doing really well at the start of the year. So I think just for the makeup of their team. Um, I'd prefer to see Tamari Martin, but again, um, yeah, it's sort of clutching at straws there a little bit because they're both playing, and you're right, Tessie News playing really good footy. Uh, yeah, when I do look at the Broncos pack, it, with Carrigan out, like I know what I had my take before, but it feels like you're missing something there. Carrigan's been fucking unreal yeah. for him, man. And Kobe Hetherington comes off the bench and tries to play that role for him. Um, it took Paddy Carrigan a long time to perfect it as well. At the start of the year when he was doing it, I remember watching it going, Clanky. this doesn't look right. Mm. Um, they're trying to be two Penrith. But by the time Origin rolled around, about 10 weeks in, P- Paddy had really perfected it. And it takes a while. It's not easy. It's like um, what him and Isaiah Yell are doing at the moment, it's, it's, yeah, it's not easy to replicate. And I think it'll take a, a, a bit for them to adjust. I think... Like you said, Payne Haas has really got to take ownership now and maybe move away from that style of play and get back to the footy. Because he, because at the start of the year, it looked like he was really st- struggling to adjust to it. Whereas, you know, Payne Haas is used to running 200 metres, running over people, getting early ball, picking someone out, running straight over top of him. He really started getting used to Paddy Carrigan, maybe not getting as many metres as he could, but it opened up um, and got him a quick play the ball and then they were able to roll off the back of it. So, um, yeah, that's my thing on the Bronx. I think I think the Roosters will beat them though. Yeah, I think Roosters will get him as well. Um, was it Connor Watson last night and offered him Anita's, which is an ice cream joint? Go, let's go get an ice cream. He goes, nah, got a game this week. So, Connor Watson, anytime jam. Ooh, yeah, he's anytime good, Ezra. Good footy in that fourteen too. That got me the old Ezra man jam. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Friday night down at Amy Park. Skip, you've got the Melbourne Storm fresh off a tough game against the Wars. Uh, dollar eleven there minus six. It was a tough game against the Wales. It, was. it wasn't easy. Minus sixteen and a half is the line. The over under is forty four and a half against the Gold Coast Titans. Uh, in terms of team list news, obviously Cheese and Noffa are in for Melbourne. And Welcome back, Cheese. David Welcome Coates back, on Cheese. the extended bench. Coates is on the bench, and the weird one for the Gold Coast Titans, which you probably want to start with, Griggy is Mars. Toby Sexton has been rested and Marju into the fourteen. <laughs> That's one of the great fourteen announcements on Marju. I love Marju. Uh, I love him as what well. Do like? What do you rested. like? Rested. Rested. Totally I don't. Sexy. I don't. I don't mind the rested um, thing. Obviously, like when you're a young half c- coming in, it's one of the toughest positions to come in, and, and results reflect on you. And I do think just getting them away from losing is really important as well, because when you develop players, it's really important of systems that you come into. Best example: DCE, Fozzy, come into a really great system at Melbourne, kind of set their careers up. And obviously, Manly. Manly. Yeah. Sorry, Manly. Um, when you get a half and you plug them into a really bad system and they start losing. Thing, you can have him out of the game in a couple of years as mm. well. Who was a who was a young halfback that Bo used Henry. to play for? T- no, nah, the one he used to play for Titans, and he went to Manly for a little bit. Nice, dude, bro. oh Jordan Rankin. No, no, no. After that, there was a little half. Oh, fuck, I forgot his name. And he went to who? Manly. After? Went to Manly. Never, never. I don't think he ever played for Manly, but like he had all the big raps from him coming through as well, and sort of dipped out after a couple of years. Best mates with um, Jerome Hughes. He's around the same age as him. Okay, I'll, I'll find it. I think it's Bowie Henry, bro. No, nah, it's not. It's not. But, like, that's what I mean. Like, resting players at this when they've potentially got an eight to 12 year career ahead of them, I don't think missing one game right now against a team like the Storm is too bad, in my opinion. Yeah. I agree, like, I agree with the, the take of it, but just um, obviously it's the Storm, and the Storm are going to roll them anyway. And if, if, if you think about it in that sense, uh, but they finally start, like, they just got to get it right. And Toby Sexton has to be a part of it. I know he, had, you know, he's been clunky because the Titans have been clunky. Kane Algie was his name. Oh, okay, oh, Kane yeah, Algie, that's right. Kane yeah. Algie. Didn't he end up at the Warriors for a stint too? Nah, Kane nah. No. But that, like, he came into first grade, killed it, and then went through like lost patterns, and then yeah. Yeah. ended up like, dipping out. Yeah. So, Pres- uh, um, Jaden Campbell's just come back in the last couple of weeks. Been coming off. He came off the bench and scored a double last week for fun. He's such a difference maker. I think you know their best squad for me. Even though I prefer Brimo at fullback, is Jaden Campbell play fullback? Brimo play six. Tanner Boyd does does a, a fair job. I'd he's probably tough, play him yeah. at fourteen. Yeah, he's a tough little nugget. <laughs> um, 
I prefer to play him at 14. Just get your, like, try to get your best 17 out because I think what's happened is the, all these players are sort of played in spurts. But, like, for me, this is um, their best opportunity to put their best 17 out with, with, all, with injuries considered because, obviously, Jaden Campbell's been the big one that's missed heaps of footy. Even Brimo's missed a couple of games. Sexton's been the mainstay. He's been there, you know, consistently all year. I, I think this is be the first game that he's missed. So if, it is weird because they're fully fit for the first yeah. time this year. They're fully fit, and yeah. this is the time they've decided to rest Sexton. So I get Isaac's point on, you know, the Sammy Walker thing. A young half coming through. Maybe they do need a rest. But of all games, I don't know. I agree with you. If the spine's fit, firing, ready to go, I'd be throwing Sexton out there. Yeah, that's the whole reason you let Jamal Fogarty walk is because Sexton was the future. I don't know why pulling him out of a Melbourne game makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So let's move on to the Storm. We'll come back to... Oh, no, fuck. No, there's not much on the Titans. Bad week <laughs> to be the Titans. A bit too bad. Like, they're going to get cheese back. He's going to have um, he's gonna have a chip on his shoulder. He's going to be pissed off. Um, hopefully, that, hopefully they were ugly. The they were, they were, yeah. Just leave healthy the, cheese is going to be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, they, he leaves the, um, the refs alone this week. But, yeah, getting Noffa. Noffa's a big in... Um, they also get. I think you know if they're naming Xavier Coates in the in the extended bench, he's obviously a big chance of playing as well. He Ooh. should make a difference. Um, yeah, it's a bad week to be the Titans. This could be massive. Sixteen and a half. That's not going to be enough. That is not. And down at Melbourne, this could be. See the unders and overs at forty four and a half. That could be the the that should be the line. I reckon. That, I reckon this is going to be a game they. They were a bit patchy against the Warriors, but the, like I said, man, the Warriors have been playing a lot better since they've moved back home. Like there's just a – they've been throwing their hands up, right? They've been, they're going to lose the fight, but they've been throwing their hands up and they're not getting KO'd in the first round, basically. Um, so they had a good crack and for parts of the games, it's still clunky, but this could be if, – if you're like – just say if you're the um, Broncos and Sharks and – and all those other teams that are sitting in the top four. This is the type of game that you'll, as a, as a Sharks fan, or you're going, fuck, you just don't want the Storm to have this at this point of the year. They're a little bit down on confidence. They got a bit, they got the dub last week. Um, I think they'll put a number on the Titans, and then the Storm will be back leading into finals. They're yeah. going to really peak at the right time. Yeah, I think so too. Storm need to start making their run now after coming off four losses as well, like Scopes here getting that win. But you want to be going into the finals with momentum if you're down on troops. A little bit different if you're Penrith and you've got Nathan that coming out. You've still got a team that's going to rock up and do it. But there's enough troops there, and they've got more troops coming back as well. So love the Storm in this one. Six o'clock on a Friday, great time to play. Not too cold down there. You can throw the footy around. Um, but Jaden Campbell, I love Jaden Campbell, everything about Damn. him. Titans are just so much better with him in there. Just got to keep him healthy. But welcome back, Cheese. Welcome back, welcome Cheese. Back, Cheese. Big Tino, bro. We say feel it every, so, I feel, feel like we so say so it every week. Yeah, he's the Roger to a You know, you know, yeah, you know he's been having a proper crack as well as Bo for more. He always yeah, does. He just, yeah. he, uh, he also just, a, just re-signed until 2026. Yeah, I've seen that. So he up, deser- fucking well, well and uh, truly deserves that. Um, yeah, Aaron Clark's really, you know, fine in the 13 role now. That's his, that's his go. Poor man's cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just as hoary to it, Aaron Clark. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he's a giggle, man. Yeah. Let's, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, quickly, uh, just before you move off that scope, shout out to Ed Cossey because he had one of the all-time claims. Yeah, we'll get to that. him and the Warriors. I'm going to give, yeah. him, pay, right. uh, give him the respect there that he deserves. All right, well, let's go to Four Pines then, scope, because it is the Bird Gang. Probably the game of the week taken on the Parramatta Eels. The line is just the one and a half, so it's a bit of a pick em. And the over-under is a little bit lower at 42 points. Big ins and outs. Jacob Arthur is obviously in for Mitchie Moses. And Shuey, Joshy Schuster, has been dropped. I've seen this one coming. If you've been paying attention to Manly the last two or three weeks, he's only been really coming on in games that they're comfortable on before the, the Dragons game when... Um when they're travelling, 10 minutes to go, back end of those games. So I've seen this coming for a while. Um, he's obviously like a big thing is he just, you know, he had that you know, injury riddled, uh, is it riddled? Riddled. riddled, riddled start to the season um, with the ankle and he just hasn't got back to full fitness. So, um, and then the emergence and, and availability of a guy like Andrew Davey, who's been unreal for him. He's awesome, bro. He's, he's yeah. a fucking He's one of the really great buys. Yeah. And he'd be on fucking <laughs> chips. Peanuts. Um, so shout out to our mate Ches. We talked about him at the start of the show. He's about to head into third all time Manly Seagulls player. He's uh, he'll get it. He'll get he's it. half a dozen games away from going past Beaver, and then uh, he should notch to the three hundred up next year. And then Cliffy Lyons number one on three hundred seven, three hundred nine, three hundred nine yeah. in range. So shout out to Ches. Considering everything that we know, he's been through, uh, and most people. 
Uh, what an achievement. Um, it's tough to really know. Moving on to the Eels, like, fuck yeah, they hammered a 12-man Penrith team for 65 minutes. Yeah, there's a non -con no you, contest day, that. You, you can't get a read on them, and I'm still on the fence with them. Like, these are the, these are the two swing teams for me. They lost the second half against Penrith. <laughs> yeah, see, that's concerning. The game's already over, though. Again, again, yeah. it's hard. It's hard to play when you play against 12, and you know you got it in the bag, and then you get to half time with relatively comfortable. It's going to be very hard for them to pick us up with 12. A bit like, you know, when Rabideau's played Manly at the start of the year when Carlos Lawton went off? Yeah. And then it got a bit scrappy at the back end of the games. It's really hard to... Um, mentally get up for those games because you start it's just something naturally starts thinking about all right let's get through this uninjured and move on to next week so it's tough to get a read on the Parramatta Eels I'm still not completely sold on them and like I said this is an important game for both this is a swing game for me um, I had these two guys the, these two teams the the difference for me in the bracket I think one of these two two teams will hold on to the eighth position in front of Canberra and this game could decide it and I'm leaning towards the bird game Ooh, I like that. Yeah, obviously, Mamichi Moses is the big out there, Jakey Arthur coming in. But yeah, for me, it depends how well Dylan Brown steps up. And also, Clint Gufferson. I've always found whenever one of the big guys have come down, as long as Clint Gufferson's in the team, he sort of stands in the chance as well. So I thought Morgan Harbour done a great job on Joey yeah. Marnie locking him up last week as well. Like, I know in terms of attack, it's not a strong point, but he can lock someone up on D as well. So looking forward to that. And they got all the boys back as well. All the Kawatu's the big one. Yeah, shout out to Morgan Harbour because he obviously went through that rough trot with Talakai, he he had a pretty rough final series last year against Olam and and the, and South as well. But he's really bounced back in the last eight weeks. Um, maybe the pressure of not having because like there's a lot of uh, external pressure on. Obviously, yeah, everyone wanted to see Tolu Kola after they seen him perform so well. Once um, Brad Parker went out, and it was you know uh, Morgan Harper got to concentrate on just playing centers. Um, Tolu Kola has for me cemented. He's going to be the first centre pick for them for years to come if they, you know, able to hold on to him. So I think all that pressure, he's, he's been able to play well. Who will he have? So left centre, he'll have... Penasini. Penasini. Yeah, that, that'll be a good matchup for him because they're both defensive centres. Will Penasini is still developing his attacking game as well? I think Opacek and Morgan Harper sort of can switch out and then Penasini and Cola, Cola are like kind of the X-Factors in the centres for those teams yeah, as well. okay. But yeah, yeah, they'll be on different sides of the field but they're the X-Factors with regards to, you know, what they breaking open the game, I agree. Well, I think the battle of Olukawasi versus um, Ice Papali'i is yeah, the one that excites me. Oh, sorry, that's, that's, mad, that's one, yeah, that's one I, I want to see. So, they both play right edge though, so they won't be going head to head. That's all right. You just want to see them do but, their but, thing. But, yeah. but, but my thing is, um, I think generally when uh, Jacob Arthur's come on, he's generally played left, and Dill Brown has like if he's had to fill in, Dill Brown, Dill Brown's floated over to the right edge for him. Yeah. BA won't be moving fucking Dill Brown from the left edge this week with all the guys to with all the pressure that uh, Jacob Arthur's, Jacob Arthur's on. So. Skip's leaning towards a little bit of Andrew Davey to go back to back to back jam. Because I think he scored two in a row at, at four points. So. Yeah, I think he debuted at Parramatta too, didn't he? He did. Yeah, he did. So Journeyman at Parramatta moved on after a season or two. Skip. Was that you? Yeah, a bit like the Skip, Andrew <laughs> Davey. Yeah, um, you, you tend to like the left edge back rows in the Scope Cups historically anyway. Yeah, Skip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Running off the Foz, man. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> so that's um, I'm going to go the other way. I think Para. I think like Ooh, we, just, we just want to talk of pure footy sense in terms <laughs> of team to team. I know Cherry Evans is probably the big talking point or the big difference where he doesn't get counselled out for Mitch Moses. I just think Errols might fuck around and, and rock up and do a job. I reckon Gutho will have a game for yeah, sure. No matter what, Gutho's going to kill it. I like Guffo at six, though. When he, um, I remember when Normie's out and he plugged in at six from wing. He went from wing to six. And he, he's just they a fuck, football player. They fuck around and throw him at hooker every now and then when Reedy needs a spell, too. Yeah. He's just everywhere. Shout Guffo. out King Guff. I'm going to go Manly. I'm with you there, Skip. Let's move on to Saturday night. Game uh, of the round. Sunshine Coast Stadium. South Sydney, they're given 17.5 against my boys as the line. 44.5 against the Warriors. Uh, and Tane Milne is the big back in for the South Sydney Rabbitohs because Jed, Jed Cartwright, Cartwright done yep. a hammy. Oh, yeah, the hammy. He was playing nice. He's playing good. Who's playing good footy? Yeah, and, and Latrell had to. Well, it was an interesting one that obviously you, we, we talked about how um, was it Talakai who went straight over uh, Cody Ray, Nicarima when he Ramian. came on Ramian, Ramian. sorry. Um, so they end up moving Trell to the left centres before Golden Point. <laughs> That was a finals like I really enjoyed that game, Sharks yeah, vs Rabbitohs. Good. Even though Rabbitohs were my pick, and uh, you know I wanted to see them win that game, that had a real finals 
uh, vibe about it. Even going down to Golden Point, um, a little bit of motion coming to the game. That had everything that game. That was fucking such a good game. Um, it hurts their finals chances. Like if, you, if you're a Rabbitohs fan, you're looking at that. They needed to win that to potentially, because uh, they've got a really tough run home as well. Um, it makes it harder for them to squeeze into the top four. I think this is a really tough game for the Waz. Um, like I said, they've been putting their hands up, but um, Sunny Coast Stadium, going up there, three o'clock. I, I, on a I, can, I can just remember, like when I think of Sunny Coast Stadium, I think of Melbourne Storm playing there. And putting a 17. number on teams because it, was, it always felt like quicker. It was quicker, like yeah. open footy. I don't like. I don't know if it's whether just because Melbourne was so much better, but I think playing at Sunny Coast Stadium will really suit selves. Uh, might make it harder for the Warriors who've been putting their hands up. And shout out to Edward Cossey. Shout out, Cossey. And, and this is this is, and I'm, and I'm going to take a little bit of credit in Edward Cossey as well because uh, last time here, it, here we go. Last this time is, they played the Storm. <laughs> this should be interesting. And this is regards to my anytime jam. You know, people get down on, you know, obviously players, they, they lose a bit of form and whatnot. Uh, and this is, a jo- this is obviously a joke, but Eddie Cossey went through a really rough time against the Storm. The Skip selected him for Eddie Time Jam in his first game back against Parramatta. And I think he just really felt that. He really just gave <laughs> bit him a of little support. Bit, of, bit of confidence and support that maybe he didn't got. And jokes aside, uh, I've been a bit critical of, like, there's no one really coming in their outside backs. Like, uh, uh, at this point, I know who Dell's going to be. Dell and Whitehead as Lesniak. I know who Marcelo Montoya's going to be. And I love that, mate, they do a really good job of getting them out of yardage. Mm. But there just hasn't really been anyone emerging themselves. And I know it's only one game, but I'm just looking at traits. I'm looking at uh, physical ability. Edward Cossey's a play for me, man. It's, um, Webster's coming in there next year. I think it's really important they uh, put a lot of work into him. He still looks, he's obviously still really raw, but there's a player in there, man. You don't, uh, you don't go scoring three against the Storm willy nilly after what they did to him uh, in the first leg down in Melbourne on Anzac Day. Yeah, I think just Dejan Arce missing out for Wade Egan is, is like really confusing to me. And uh, sometimes when you're a coach, you just want to put in people that you trust and you put them in different positions. This reminds me when they put Harry Grant at seven and it just didn't work as well. They're just yeah, out and out nines mm. as well. And I know they got covered there with Freddie Lussick who's going to do a job for you. But when you just got an out and out half and Dejan Arce who's Done a job for you. Is Volkman in the extended squad as well, Jacko? Yeah, this is that's the weird thing about Stasis selection sometimes. Like he had full faith in Dejan Arce two weeks ago. Yeah. And, and then he, he lost d- it. He had full faith in Harris Devita at fullback. And then he threw Reese there the next week. It's, it's, I don't really know what he's doing with his spine there. Yeah, yeah. it's just typical and interim I, coach I, sort of fucking... I think the Rabbitohs, like Melbourne, need to really start making their run as well. Like we sort of said on our last show that I can see Latrell having a back end of the year, much like Hayne did back in 09. Um, it's up to him. He's at that point now where he can do whatever the fuck he wants. And, and sometimes with that, you can sort of pick and choose your moments as well. So if he's committed and he's all in, which I think we are, which we both think he is, mm. um, self could fuck around. Alex Johnson had Trick, Easy. load up. Yeah. Um, your boy Jack Murchie's had a nice month. He's always been good, He's bro. Good, yeah, yeah. Hey, your boy Jack Murchie's had a good month. He's, <laughs> no, he's not a dog. Oi. Mud is Curran on the bench. He's a dig. Remember yeah. we were talking about last week? I don't know why he's been fucking uh, floating around on that. He, was, he had a, I mean, a, by his standards, he was in a different game last week, but yeah. they all did. Plug that dude into Melbourne later. Oh, oh yeah. Well, he's he got, he's got to be getting reps. Like, he was at the Roosters. I, you, know? you can see things. He, he does. He gets a few shit things getting into his game because he looks frustrated. I played it for Matt Mounties. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's Curran. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Murchie, oh. Murchie. Oh, Murchie, yeah. Oh, Murchie, yeah. Oh, I'll feed through a Murchie. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, Murchie. yeah. Far. No, um, Egan, Egan to six. Egan's quietly been one of the better nines and not only fucking for the Warriors in the competition in the last He's nice, man. month or two. He's, I, I don't know if I ended up saying it last week, but when I look at the Warriors, when I look at guys like Adam, at the core of Adam, Egan and uh, Josh Curran, they remind me so much of, did I say this last week? Tom Alolo, Reese Robson and... Um, Clean. Welcome back, Cotter. Ruben Cotter. Cotter. <laughs> Those three, like you've got a good core of three guys that Different. are important in the middle that if you get it right around them, um, Tohu's another I, one think, I, every week is I just, think they'll get the reps that yeah. they deserve when the Warriors are flowing and people will notice them a lot more. But Wade Egan, I was critical of him. I didn't think he was capable of this when he came across from the Panthers and he was playing there last year, but he's fucking playing unreal. But the Panthers don't debut anyone. 
Like they've got yeah, the true. best junior system true. that that yeah. we've got. So Dane Laurie has to go to the Tigers to get a crack. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So like, and he was he was tipped to be one of the next guys. Like when even when Chico was there, he was a young guy coming through. So he's always kind of had wraps on him. He just didn't quite kick on because then they brought back Uppy. So. Yeah. They never really had the buy-in. Like I don't think now. I think he's now got the respect of his teammates as well. Before he used to get out of dummy half and take off and then be look around, and no one be there. I think he makes the right decisions more times than not now. So then players have got a lot of confidence in him. They'll run that short hole off. They'll you know he's got a nice little deception. I really like Wade Egan. I think he's going to be a real player. And I and I agree with Ice. Don't move him to six. Keep him at nine because he's. Trendy nut. He's only guilty of the fact that when Chanel went off, they forced and he had to go play six. He threw yeah. a couple it, of nice He threw a nice four head and Cossie goes over three States, of the best. States goes, oh, fuck, what do we got yeah, here? Yeah, uh, well, we got, we got ourselves a six. <laughs> Little Gene Namu coming through. <laughs> but I agree. I think South, this could be the game to catapult the into finals, man. I think they put a square on my boys. Uh, let's move on to Canberra <coughs> Raiders. Skip taking on the Penrith Panthers. Messi. Obviously with Nath out, uh, Salmon and the poor man's Isaac John. SOS, Sean O'Sullivan rolls into the halves. <laughs> Uh, what do you like in this one? We got the three and a half line scope and the over under at forty one point five. In yeah, so let's start off on the Raiders playing unreal. For me, this game will decide the fate of the Raiders in terms of like they they've got a really nice run. If they can knock off Penrith, because I, I didn't even have um, obviously I didn't have them beating Penrith last week. Um, it, it just they can just take a little bit of pressure off, and you know, Sticky could do with you know taking a little bit of pressure off with the, the valves there, but um. Tarpany, Joe Tarpany, best prop in the NRL. Called that the study year. Get the receipt out. He's killing it, man. I don't think I was with you on that one too, Scott. So yeah, yeah that's a, a good shout. <laughs> you called him. You called him the most underrated player. In the yeah, game. And yeah. Then, but I said the reason he's underrated because you're like, oh, wasn't no, he my I, underrated? No, listen here. No, he when I, when I said he's underrated, you're like, no, he's not. Everyone thinks he's going to go. Well, I think he's the best prop in the NRL. Mm. Going to be the best prop in the NRL. Better than Fisher Harris. Yeah, I'd have him. You remember we had this argument even Adam a couple of weeks ago, and I think I chose Adam at the time. I think Tarps has just really fucking gone to another, and it helps because Tarps is playing in a better team than what Adam is. But um, yeah, give me Tarps, man. He's fucking so good. He's just like I, I'm. I'm telling you, like, because not many people watch Raiders games, or if you're a casual, you probably don't watch as many Raiders games, so you don't appreciate what Jack White and Joseph Tarpany do on a weekly basis. But Joseph Tarpany. Um, and then what? I, and this is what I wrote down watching the Raiders when they put on a few spectacular tries against the Titans. I'm like, how do you do film? How do you do uh, review on the Raiders? Because the shit that they do, they didn't do the week before, and they're not going to do next week. So you, like, it's so hard to defend, bro. Like you got guys, Hudson and Young. and again, Jack White's the perfect example of that. He's not like your typical six. He he could run over a front rower, like he could. Ha- he loves it, actually. He'd prefer... He's a dog. He'd prefer to run over a front row than throw a cutout ball to Nick Cottridge for a fucking double. Like, that's just the... Yeah, that's he'd just rather the sort go of, through you. He'd rather go you. through you, right? And then you've got guys like Hudson Young. Don't know what he's going to toss up. Elliot Whitehead on the other side. He's so silky and skillful. They move him into the middle. Tough. <laughs> yeah, tough as fuck. Um, Fogarty's the, the one that you probably know that you, he's straight going... Straight up and down. Fogarty. He's straight up and down, Fogarty. He's going to kick the corners, you know, make sure his contact's good. But everyone else, yeah, even well, Jordan Rubs, bro. Right. When Rubs, you know, comes off the bench, he's back in the team this week. I think he missed a week or two with suspension. When Rubs comes on, bro, he just... Like, the, it'll be the third or fourth tackle. They're inside the 20. Rubs is a winger. He'll just be getting for a scoot. And you're like, what's Rappin' doing in there? Like, it'd be that hard to, to game plan against the Raiders. So, um, I think this is a really what's big game line? for them. What's the line, Jacko? The line's three and a half. Oh. So it's I'm, I'm, I'm just going Raiders for the win. Yeah, I think Raiders win this. Well, going Raiders for 35 hit to hit. It's funny when you look at teams, and obviously, like, we were talking about this with Paddy Carrigan. When Paddy Carrigan's in, you're like, wow, that pack looks good. As soon as you take Nathan and Jerome out of that Panthers side, you start looking over to the other side, and you're like, geez, these Raiders got a, yeah. got a nice squad. And like I said, <laughs> there's a history here. There's the, the pat on the head to Joseph Tarpany in early fucking 2020. Yeah. Then there's the, I think it was 2021 or 2020. Panthers pack will still bully him. Panthers Pack is still going to be Panthers Pack. Nothing they're going to still bully him. They, it's still going to, I don't, they, they're not they going to bully. bully him. Yes, they will. No, they fucking won't bully Panthers them. Panthers Pack will bully him. They'll lose, but they'll get... Nah, it's the class in the outside backs that have got him with Nath and putting the polish on the back end of sets. They haven't like out-bullied Canberra in the games that they've played. Yes, they have. They've got cl- outclassed. And now they don't have that class in Jerome and Nathan, <laughs> so that's going to be the difference. 
They'll it's gonna be a f- this is gonna be fucking mad. You know why Spencer Lunu's coming on and he'll oh. bully blokes. Spencer oh yeah, Lunu. he could kill someone. Oh, Penrith st- Panthers going right could, too, he, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I'm not fucking who um, the battlers from out west. <laughs> the battlers from out west <laughs> from the foot of the mountains. They're all right. I reckon Spencer Lunu could kill someone and still get eight hours sleep and like <laughs> not lose a wink of sleep. Yeah, he plays with a chip on his shoulder. He got he that. Says. He's got them eyes, man. Yeah. Well, fuck you, Mo- Mo- Moses. Leo. You, I think Canberra and Canberra be too good. And just a quick one. Actually, we I'm spoke going about now. <laughs> you flipped. You Panthers. Yeah, I'm going Panthers. Good man. Panthers and Spencer. Quick one on um, Jack White and Scope. I mentioned it. Um, Matty Johns had Adam, Adam Elliott on last week, and it was yep. just nice to hear him talk about because we talk about him being such a tough bastard and Jack White and running over top of people. Adam Elliott said the most slept on thing about White's game is his communication, his organisation. He goes, he has all the traits of a traditional halfback in terms of if he gets us where we want to be, he's yelling the whole time, he's super high footy IQ, but almost like the African-American quarterback, because he's so athletic, you sort of discredit that side of his game. Yeah, okay. I thought it was a nice little analogy he threw out there. Well, gee, I, I, mate, and I, put it, I pigeonholed him that, as that, like you a ball runner, just runner, think he yeah. needs a, a guy that can get him around the park, a bit like, you know, when they had... Um, to be fair, nothing looks clunky around him. That like you know you're yeah, all good like it's just his final touches like he just doesn't have that silky pass at the end yeah. but every you're right there's a clear direct plan that he run, that he runs with every time so that does make it's sense. hard to be clunky when you run straight yeah because <laughs> because yeah. he doesn't stop like he, he doesn't have tempo yeah. that's nah. his but that's the that's Million the only thing hour, he's lacking yeah. he will he gets Him the ball Fozzie. he gets the ball <laughs> now fuzzy has got nice tempo no nah, he's just right trying to get he's just trying to get going that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Posse needs it because he actually needs to He's get going. He's warming the hammies up. Jack White and his run first every time. Like sometimes you've got to talk halves into, come on, man, you need to run first. Like he's run first all the time and then pass later. And sometimes it comes off a bit fucking willy-nilly. But uh, yeah, it's interesting though. I like that then. It's a good shout because um, I would have thought he was just more of a like off-the-cuff sort of player. So um, um, and, interesting and comment there. I read somewhere the other day, Steve Crichton, this is the first game he's missed in 15 years. Like since he was, oh, like in terms of oh all really? All like yeah. never been injured ever. Fuck. <laughs> That's a random stat. That's a random stat. Yeah. I love that. But no wonder he's good. He's just not scared of getting hurt ever. Yeah. And There's going to be some shit in this game for sure. Yeah. And Panthers bully him. You remember after the uh, Tarpany head rub? That was the the next time they played was when they brought out the handshake. You remember that after yeah. being called arrogant stuff? Yeah. So that's oh, right. yeah, that's yeah, a bit right. of yeah. yeah, that's right. right let's roll on. because I thought yeah. they were going to get like I remember saying like Canberra's packs too like solid. They're not going to get they'll they won't they'll stick up to Penrith and I remember Penrith just rolling straight through them. Yeah, respectfully. All right, back at Shark Park, Points Bet Stadium, the Cronulla Sharks are taking on the St. George Illawarra Dragons. They're giving you nine and a half here. Skip is the line. The Ooh. over under is 41 and a half. What do you got? Nine and a half? Nine and a half for the Dragons. Yeah. Get on that. Must be some rain predicted for that line because uh, for That's me, too short. I, I, I wrote down um, Sharks are going to be hard out because physically – Physically, like I talked, you know, I had my concerns about Connor Watson, and that's more positionally for him, just you know, not getting Tracy, caught out. Connor Tracy, Connor Tracy sorry, um, not getting caught out in uh, the pendulum type of back three uh, work that a winger has to do, and then also defensively, which he did a good job of on the weekend. I know, but I thought um, physically, like you got to beat, you got to beat the Sharkies. Like they're one of those teams you physically got to. Got to be up for the battle. They're not going to give it to you. Like, you even look at their outside backs, man. They're, their centres are the perfect example of that. Jesse Ramian and, and Sifatalakai, they don't want to go sideways. They yeah. want to go through you. They <laughs> want to take your soul. Mo- Moisa talked about it at the start of the year. Like, one of the things that um, Craig Fitzgibbons wanted to portray through them is that they want to go through the middle and that's how they want to win. And, 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 it's, and it, it shows in the bench that they have. Um, I wrote down <laughs> my preview on this game. I said, Sharks are just a a better version of dragons across the board respectfully like they're just nah. they're the type of not with the not with seven six there with the sharks you're not going that angle or just kind no, of like just a, like this is the team that the dragons would like to be the sharks if that makes does that make sense like they they want to be the same style of footy they want to be um they want to go physically win the physical battle and they've got like these these big bodies but the only the only real difference is the silt that they play with in shot for shot but really at the end of the day more often than not they want to go through you like I know most teams want to do but I think there's a real physical emphasis on the way that they defend what happened did you just lose your screen yeah that's good um yeah so I think um you know these guys are obviously uh this is one of those um the rivalry games as well which are always good that you know they both teams get up for this game yeah they do but I think um Cronulla get the job done and I want to give a shout out to Kate Dykes um on D-Butt son of the great 
Adam Dykes is a young fella. I've trained with him heaps at Reborn Fitness. Good lad. Good lad. Moves well. Played a bit of, you know, touch. Oz tag with him as well. Um, Moisa give him a big rap. Like, is he a Moisa style player? Does he look like that? Um, similar backgrounds, touch and all that? Yeah. Like he's... No, yes and no. Like he's got the silk. I think um, they're really excited about him here at Cronulla. I think they. I think they. They threw up some of his Newtown highlights. He's he's rapid as well. He yeah. looks pretty fucking quick. He's fit. He's fast. Um, he'll, be, think he'll go well. He'll be getting the ball on the platter too from the boys from the seven and six as well. And he's filling some big shoes. Will Kennedy's been unreal this year. He's one of the more slept on guys. If we if we're going to do underrated next year, I'll fucking Will Kennedy's uh, he's a front runner for me. He's he's one of those guys that. Um, I don't know why he doesn't get the credit he deserves. It's because Nico. Just Nick, uh, depends but, who your superstar is. But even before is. Nico was there last year, he's been doing this for two years now. Yeah, agree. I think it's just the lack of the highlight play. So like he, he's always solid. It's like sort of the Dylan Edwards effect. Like yeah, you're right. He's very, very good. Yep. But he doesn't – like you can't picture in your head a, a Will Kennedy highlight other than when he smoked Reese Walsh. Like he, yeah, you're you know not, I mean? he's not going to yeah, consistently throw point, the yeah. cutout ball, skip the centre and hit the winger. Or, he, or what he does most score, of the you know? time is they call it the fan shape. He comes around and it might be a two pass and you either draw and pass the winger or he'll just go nice and early, which is so underrated when you play, is give the centre early enough ball where he can just do the little flick on. Especially Therefore, he doesn't well. get the try assist. Yeah. yeah, but like it's just a nice little try, man. Will Kennedy, so big shoes to fill for Kay Dykes. Good luck, brother. Um, a lot good, of, the, a lot really of that. Kid. I hope you go as well. A lot of that fan shape's built on who your center is as well. I remember True. Moisa used to say that. He goes, when he used to sweep right to Dean Fudder, he goes, I knew he had silk hands, so he should just tip it off early. So he's got some he's got some troops yeah. in, in the three and four, so he's going to be all right. Yeah. Early yeah. ball to Talakai and um, Ramian's not bad anyway. Load up, load up. Load you know up. those crazy sessions that we do at like Reborn? And, and he flies. And he's, he goes hard with Travi. He goes oh, hard, yeah. he's fit fit. He's fit fit. Yeah, he's proper Scary. fit. Scary. And I think he did his. I think he did his like ACL back in the last year, or or uh, shoulder. Or, he had surgery in the off season, so it's good to see him back fit and, and killing it. Just lost all my show notes, so we just <laughs> my laptop's gone flat. Let's <laughs> go, Jacko. For me, uh, Bulldogs, the Cowboys, eh, Jacko? Yeah, roll straight in, Skip. Obviously, the the Bulldogs. You're getting three fifty for them in this one um, against the Cowboys. It's plus ten and a half, and it's. The over under is forty four point five, and this one is being played in Bundaberg. Is that correct, Skip? Yeah. So really, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I thought um, we we can break down that a little bit more after this, but there's some dogs on the Bulldogs at the moment. <laughs> there's some dogs. A and couple you know wins. What? A couple yeah. wins do fucking yeah. wonders. And you know, they? you know, you know, right now, like as a Bulldogs, it's the what, what I was talking about when you play a team that's got twelve. It's like the Bulldogs are playing like that every week. Not they don't have twelve out there. You have nothing to lose. Like they're literally, they're going. I've called them the spoiler squad. Like they, they're going to be that sort of team that will happily just love to knock a few players out, um, or knock a team out of the knock out a of few the, players out. Sorry, knock a knock a few teams out <laughs> of contention of whether it be the top four or the top eight, and they get an opportunity here to be spoiler for the Cowboys and put a bit of pressure on them. Uh, to uh, you know, even the Cowboys number one spots available if if, if they Penrith, have the run. Yeah, yeah, if they have a run in Penrith, I know it's very outlandish. They're three games behind Penrith at the moment, so there's a bit to go. But they could be spoiler here, the Dogs. And you got to remember, game one, yeah, got like them, f- got them up there in uh, in in, uh, in Townsville. Both different sides now, though. This is before the Cowboys were the Cowboys, um, and the Bulldogs hadn't re- that, at that point. They didn't know who they were. They went through a shit period and they rejuvenated. Um, but uh, the thing that I wrote down with regards to Bundaberg, it's just like a bad team to take the Bundaberg. And it reminds me again of when Parramatta did it at the start of the year. For sure, the NRL must have something to do with this too because if you're the Bulldogs <laughs> nah, they or get, the Parramatta Eels... Those country games, bro, they get like a million bucks. Yeah, they, The Panthers used to get a million bucks to go to Bathurst per game. Yeah, so, but why would you take the Cowboys? So for me... Because at the start of the year, it would have been a shit lineup for the game. It would have been like, oh, this is going to be a kid's true, game. True, true. They would, yeah, have, they would okay. have underestimated the Cowboys. Yeah, that makes sense. That 100% makes sense. Um, because I would have thought the NRL got involved because um, if, I was, if I was the Bulldogs or Parramatta... <laughs> Shout out Bundaberg community. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bundy. A few Bundy rums. Yeah, grouse. You'd be, taking, you'd be taking the wires or the bloody... Oh, yeah, you, you know want to take mean? the wires up there. <laughs> at yeah. the start of the year, that yeah. would have been the Cowboys-Bulldogs yeah. yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, true. That makes sense. Yeah, anyway, so uh, Cowboys, really impressive game. And I think it was in the commentary. It was on Channel 9. I think Gus was talking about it. Um, I thought that was a really important game for their final hopes. I know Dragons aren't going to be that team, but um, it was a shit fight to begin with. It was one of those games that the Dragons wanted to play, and Gus was alluding to that. 
and they dealt with it. Dragons had a little mini comeback. They played really aggressively. They put it on the Cowboys, and the Cowboys just went bang, bang, bang. Yeah. We're that much better than you. We're a fucking top two team. See you later. Yeah. Laters. And, uh-huh. and good sides do that. Like, that's what Scope's sort of trying to bring up here. Like, you see a side like Parramatta, and we were, I know we talk about Parramatta a lot, but they can drop some of those games mm. as well. Good sides turn up against the bad sides, Great. and it may look ugly for a bit, for 50, 60, sometimes even 70, but when, it, when, the, when 80 minutes comes around, they're on top. What, and that's Jer- what they do. That's what they do. What, Jeremiah Nanai's not doing his best work late again? Yeah. <laughs> Holy. Is he, he's, he's second on their point scoring, uh, try scoring. Leaderboard at the moment, second behind AJ. What's he on? 30, 16? He's on 16. 16. AJ's Fuck. on 22, I think. Yeah. <laughs> That's what unbelievable, bro. What yeah. a season, man. Oh, five yeah. of the best to go. Yeah. What a gun. And also, a quick shout out to Carl Flanagan as well. It's good to see the bro smile. Yeah, so killing that, bro. I've enjoyed some YKTR Flanagan too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, sending him out some YKTR. He had a nice little flick pass. To, he, it was a bit of silk. It was a bit of silk. From, it's a rare piece of silk too from Flano. Yeah. He's been going good. He's been a real calming influence for Burton. But he had his chance to come off his right foot, get a nice little offload. His boy, Maxi King, <laughs> who's also a friend of Grouse and a few. Yeah. Oh, he put it down. He, Maxi King could have gone over for a rare piece of meat as well. Shout out, Maxi King. All One right, of the greats. On. Last game um, of the round, we got the West Tigers. They're giving you minus six here, Skip, up against the Newcastle Knights in Campbelltown. Tigers. Uh, Tigers favourites. Tigers favourites, rather. And the over-under is 42 and a half. The teamless news, the bit of a weird one was David Clemmer yeah. issued with that breach notice. So he's been left out of the 17 this did week. You, did you hear what happened? So yeah, well, the, the yarn, trainers a spray, did he? The yarn is apparently he got, they tried to pull him off. He refused and then sprayed the trainer. What so, the fuck? Uh, you, how I mean, are you, you giving a week have, for that? You guys have played footy. I'm sure that's probably not. That's, that first happens time weekly. Yeah. yeah. That happens weekly. You yeah. also remember. There's more comes, to it. it comes is that, what, you, is that what you're alluding to? <laughs> it comes at the same week that he was allegedly going to be dealt to para, and then at the 11th hour that fell through. So I He's think if you outer. read between the lines, there's something going on with the Newcastle Knights and Clemmer yeah. beyond just him saying, get fucked, I'm sweet. Soulless, like the Skip said last year. The fact that the fucking Tigers are a minus six favourite. Says a lot about where the Knights are at the moment. That's respectfully to the Tigers, who just lost their best player in Jackson Hastings. And one thing I wrote down just before that Does game... Does that hurt you to say that? Not really. You can still think he's a lemon and fucking <laughs> rate him as a player. Um, Jackson Hastings, I reckon... I think he was... You know how we're a bit critical of uh, Brett Kamali, like, why are you playing him at 13? I think he must have liked playing 13 because... Um, more touches. More touches. Maybe he gets to play, swing both sides. And also, I think it was quite evident in the fact that Brooks didn't play and they still brought in Jock Madden. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So yeah, he played well too. Jock yeah, he did. He, did. he did. He went well. He's all right, eh? He let Adam Dewey do his thing as well, which yeah. is... For the, That's for important. Tigers, Adam do Dewey's anything? the difference. Yeah, he's Adam the Dewey's, Like, he plays with a passion that just rubs off on players. Um, the try off the scrum was just... That was Jack White-esque. Yeah. Just took it one off and just fucking <laughs> boosted and beat your boy. He's done it twice games. now. He did it against the... So the Broncos, and then he did untouched. against uh, he, like, he did against the Panthers as well, Cape bro. Cape was quick too. He just skinned. Them. He wouldn't have got pulled back in touch. Either, bro, he, he, he did it against the Panthers on Viliami Kiko on his fucking first yeah. game he must six a couple quick. of weeks ago. Yeah, he's just, well, it's, you know what? All, so the, big, all those bro. teams like to defend wide now because they run that same shape. Um, just really good footy IQ for me. Like he's yeah. identified it. It's a weakness. Now, guess what? This is where layers come into it. He's going to rip in now, and then he's going to fucking flick it out the back. I'm. The Knights aren't smart enough to be able to adjust anyway, so I'm not giving away any, <laughs> any tactics here. Watch out for him for any time jam on that right-hand side now because the, the Knights' defence is going to have – they're going to have to be aware of it. It'll be on the scouting report. They yeah. would have watched it happen to him twice. Now fucking Dewey's role is to rip in. Bang. Out Let it go back. out the back nice and early. Who's you the right winger? Who's it'll the right ro- It'll be Kapala and um, Naden on that side, won't it? Naden. Naden. Like Naden. Yeah, Naden any time jam this week. Love it, Skip. Um, is that us? Yeah, just it? one little last little thing on the Knights before we finish up. Um, I wrote down that they just lack trust in each other. Um, so this is, again, Phoenix Crossland comes onto the field after about 25 minutes. He comes on and plays that roving lock roll that Kurt Mann's played at points, and then he plays it as well. He comes to take a – pushes up on um, Jaden Braley. Is it Jaden up there or Blake? Which one's up there? Uh, Jaden. 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 Jaden's up there. Jaden, yep. Yeah, Jaden's up there. Um, and then Jaden gives him an awful ball, but – you know, it is what it is. Jaden Braley is a guy that you can never doubt he's, he's trying his guts out. For the rest of the game, it would go offload and there'd be some sort of like gap in and around like I'm always looking for wide positions between middles yeah, because all the best players then identify that. You think of Munster pushing Did off he? an offload, Teddy, all the best players in the comp. So they'd go offload out the back and it was there to be taken. 
no one's pushing for each other. There's like there's just a lack of trust in each other, and it's understandable because they haven't been getting the results, and it's just been so clunky. But outside of when Kalen plays, everyone buys into. So this is some of this is a hard thing, and I was going to say it last week with regards to Hainsy. We were so dependent on Hainsy in 2000 and after yeah, we went on that run in 09. The whole 2000s. After after <laughs> running no nah, because Felitti and and um and Chris who else Inu chipped in for a while there when they went to the Warriors and those two guys went there in particular um, and there's someone else that ended up moving on. Anyway, we just had more structure before, like 11 and 12 in particular, and we were so reliant on Hainsey that, you know, if he wasn't there or there was just no real trust in anyone outside of that. So when Kalen goes missing, it's so evident that no one really pushes and runs hard for each other outside of it. And it's such a little um, minor detail, but notice that when, you know, I think obviously they might address it because it's it was so evident to see but just watch out for it, like who's punching holes off each other in this team because um, that's why I think the Knights are soulless and that's why I think there's just there's oh, no points in them. I'll tell you what's happening at the Knights. Little side WhatsApp groups is getting set up and, and it's called Mad Monday Prep. <laughs> that's when your season's over, bro. You get a couple, five of the boys start playing in Mad Mondays. I was in them. And yeah, you start getting ready. And maybe, is this the end, end of Adam O'Brien? I think so. Well, the rumours today, yeah. the number one story across Fox today is apparently a bit of a player revolt. It revolves around a group chat um, where a few whispers about the coach allegedly has been getting about. So, the, when did that come up? Uh, does that uh, mean that's they the want him out? Did Isaac is John that? start that? Because he's now he's flipped over to the Roosters. Then. He thought it was about Mad Monday, but I don't know. I think Adam Bryan, uh, Adam O'Brien, um, yeah, he's definitely one of the one of the guys under pressure at the moment. Oh, yeah. And oh. that shit just happens when teams are down the bottom, man. Yeah, Bradman Best is back in this if week. BA so that gets is a big out for them, but if BA yeah. gets out, get him straight there uh, to B. Newcastle I, I think, and I drag think, drag I, Mitchie with you I think and Luke Brooks. Mm. You know your little chat. That's a, <laughs> that's a scope take for you. That's uh, the sports show for you, guys. Guys, that's the sports show. Thanks for tuning in. We are dropping some merch tomorrow. Some tracksuits are a fucking vibe. So make sure you get around there. www.yktr.com.au. Enjoy the football. Enjoy the gambling. Scope's going to give you some tips. He's been on fire lately. Bit of Ezra good. man, bit of jam. So um, <laughs> stay tuned for that. Follow us on TikTok. Follow us on Instagram. Leave a comment in the section and we'll see you guys later.